needs to change their mindset. I've taught a course called Working Smarter, and this is day one of the course with the nurses and the pharmacists, because it's like everybody needs to change the way they think, because we all get into habits. We've all been around a long time and dealing with things. Um, hopefully, this will help you just change your thinking and upskill you a bit, a little bit to understand, you know, the impacts of having long, long-term conditions, hopefully help to focus on improving the patient's experience and the overall well-being of patients, okay? That's the idea. That's my big passion with everybody, physicians, non patients But we can work smart. We can make every contact count. A patient's experience good, then I think, you know, we've won. Go home feeling very satisfied. You can save a life just by having a, you know, having a really good phone call with somebody. Um, so... I don't know how this works. I know how it works in one borough. How does it work? Who's you haven't started? Who else has started? How has it worked? So I'll just tell you in Lewisham. The way it works in Lewisham, just because I know it, is that we have two appointments for this. This right. So they have appointment one if they go and see the general practice nurse or the GPA or the health assistant, and they have all their physical checks done. And then that that person's job is to book them in for the next step which is with a senior clinician to go through the results and look at everything together. That's one idea. Anyone got a different method of being told? You can throw ideas back to them if they haven't thought about it. Okay, you can have ideas, take this idea, whatever you think will work. You know when you read patients what it's like when you know. Um, I do think it really, and I'm, you can tell me in notion if you agree, but the actual clinician that gets them for that first appointment should be responsible for booking that second appointment. If they have to go back to a care coordinator to book them, you're going to lose them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, it's, you know, I think if you're going to, I think a two stage process, why would I do a two stage process? Because I want all the physical checks done. I want their blood pressure, their pulse, their waist, if they need ECG. Um, their bloods, everything done, foot check, everything done in that physical. So when we ring them, say they can't, actually, I can't come in a second time. That's fine. We can do it over the phone because we've got everything physical, but it would be better if you came in. And then that person has half an hour, and it should be half an hour. They're making me do it in 20 at the moment, and it's very stressful because if you're dealing with more than one known some condition, you've got to look at everything, yeah. So I'd say half an hour, even 45 minutes, that that person should have to look at everything, including what the social needs are, you know, what the mental health needs are, so you can then work it out and, and signpost, yeah? So that's one method, that's one mod model. You don't have to do it. But if you haven't started yet, that might be an idea on how you can start. So you, so the care coordinators would be ringing up and booking them in for step, step one, but you would explain this in step, step process, yeah? But, um, is that similar to what you've done? What have you been doing in your borough? Which borough are you? Uh, Southwark. So Southwark. So you've started. What are you doing in Southwark? Uh, just finished this young PD project. Yeah. Um, uh, um, but generally, uh, general day, I would. Look, I'm doing drug monitoring. Okay. Uh, getting them to do the blood tests and review the medications, and also uh, give them help advice. So you're doing it all in one go. Yes. Yeah, okay. Sometimes. Yes. Sometimes. So have a think. Be proactive. You suggest. You think you are the ones who phone people all the time. Like we don't. I do something. But I don't do it for my main job. I speak to them face to face or a telephone consultation. So if you think actually this is what I think would work, then you you think and tell them what you think would work because you're doing the job. Makes sense, you know. So actually I think it would work to come in twice, or actually our population wouldn't do that. Because every population is different, isn't it? Okay, so that's one idea. So the second appointment is that they come in, and I've done, I'm, we've, I've actually started this project. So on Saturday, I see the people who've had blood tests, and it, they are so grateful for that appointment. I can tell you now because you're unpicking everything. They're like, you know, oh my god, thank you so much for going through this, this, and this. Because but, you know, you're looking at that patient as a whole person. And they are, you know, you're making a plan. You may not get it all done in half an hour. I may not, I often don't. But I may just ring them next week just to check in on what my plan is. So it does work. And I'm sorry they're not coming for the first step and we need to look at why they're not. But I think it's general, um, oh, what's the word? Apathy, isn't it? They just, everyone's a bit like, you know, a bit like we are, but we're trying to be positive. Yeah? 
So that's one idea. So if you've got any ideas by the end of the day, you think actually I could think, then share them. Let's share it and see what we can get going across Southeast. Um, who's involved? You. Yes, social prescribers, health workers, mental health nurses, GPs, senior nurses, health care, everybody, all of us, managers, we should all be involved in this. We all have a part to play. This is our new way of working. This should be long-term conditions care from now. Okay, not just come in for your diabetes review. That's out, old-fashioned, out of fashion. Come in for your review. Let's look at the whole review. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so that's who... Who is their care navigator? That's the new name for reception, is it not? Yeah. So, and they're also vitally important. So they also have to deal with the person who comes in through the door, or if you're on the telephone hub, deal with the phone call when it comes through. Anything to say? Is this sound doable, or does it sound like, oh my god, this is so undone? I'm Speak to me. I'm a little bit confused about. So I'm just sort of writing this. Down. Yeah, write it down. Yeah. I'm just a little bit confused about ownership. Mm -hmm. Because who owns this? You know, so if whoever does the medical tests, is it their responsibility to feed back on the medical tests? Or is it the next stage? And who does that stage? And who books it? And I'm just because so I'm it depends what it depends how you do it in yeah. your in your project. So in, I'm just gonna say Lucian because yeah. I know we've been running it. So care coordinators, your responsibility is they get given a list, correct? Tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. They then have to ring up and book those patients in. For that first we call it initial review right that's their responsibility isn't it yeah our responsibility so who's the help what's your name sorry lucy. lucy would then see that patient for that review and her responsibility this is just in one idea yeah. is to book that patient in with in the in the multi-mobility clinic which they should be set up for them to come back for those results so it's sort of almost like so whoever sees them is the, their responsibility for the, the next step. Is, yeah because i think if you don't okay. do that and i've seen that go the other way it doesn't work it yeah, does like, not work going back to the care coordinator yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 it falls i've right. seen it done it doesn't work that's my that's just my experience i understand the clearance yeah Sorry. yeah so so lucy bless her you'd be like oh let me just put you in you have to sell it part two oh, i can't possibly come back in again oh, half an hour let's go to it we have to sell it we have to hook them in. It's really important. It'd be so good. We'll think of ways we can sell it. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. So that's how I would do it. And that's how it's been running in Lewisham for quite a while with 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 actually with single conditions, isn't it? Um, we just now expanded it to multiple mobility. Um, we've labelled it green. Green on the image of one, but you can choose your colour. Um, but yeah, so everybody kind of knows that system. It's a two-pronged approach. But I think personally, and also, Lucy might pick up something in that conversation. They might start, sometimes they share different people, don't they? And they might say about social prescribing, actually, or they, they're really struggling with debt and they can't get to the food bank. And then you might look at Anne May, who's in your clinic. Let me just put you in with Anne. I'm going to book you in with Anne as well as booking you in with the next week. Yeah. Because so you're, then you're listening and they're like, oh my God, this is brilliant. You're actually thinking of me as a whole person. Sorry. Can you hear us? Shout. Hear me. Yeah. In Bromley, at least, it's going to be like a one-stop shop. So all of you are different teams that are involved in different plans. So in Bromley, I think the structure is more that there'd be all of the different professions available at one time. And it will kind of be like almost an immediate mm -hmm. referral to that person. So different teams are doing these Yeah, exactly. Things, but it's just being aware that this is one example. I think there'll be kind of a one-stop shop example. Yeah, it will go, different, yeah. Different places. Also, I don't know if it's worth mentioning the role of the MDT. Yeah, we will talk about that. Yeah. So does that make sense? So Bromley, you're going to have a one-stop shop. And, you know, and it works, fine, you're going to sell that. If it doesn't work, did you know that? So with Lucian's got one idea, you've got another idea. It, you know, we just have to, and the thing is, we just need to listen to the ideas and think, okay, well, that's working brilliantly. Actually, Lucian might go, actually, we could change that or... So that might go, actually, that's a really good idea. Let's let's follow that model. OK, so and it will be, yeah, as Lauren said, there will be multidisciplinary. We have. We've already got multidisciplinary. But you've also got clinically, you've got your um, GPs, your, a, your advanced practitioners, paramedics, physios, um, mental health nurses. Uh, think, and then we're going to also link in very cl uh, closely with secondary care. So the clinical side, once they've seen Lucy and in, say, or they've gone, because I don't know how they'll get the bloods as quickly as the one stop shot. There must be a way to do that. Um, but once they say, let's say they've had their bloods done and it's been looked at, you might 
think I could do this much, but actually the renal CKD side, I that really probably needs to be referred to the renal team. And you'll have, hopefully, we're hoping, we'll have access to secondary care, renal team and diabetes. Yeah, Lauren, should we? Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 it's going to be, it's not just going to stop at primary care. The idea is it's going to bring us together with secondary care. But I'm just talking about where you are at at the moment, yeah? Any questions about any ideas that you've had that think actually that might work? Um, part of the, part of the uh, challenge was kind of suggesting things, um, to me is not really knowing the clinical part of things. Right. Subtesting it. Can they be done on the spot? Do they need to be sent off to a lab? Yes. Yeah. Special and fancy, and we're going to have to wait a week, two weeks, a month. Well, that's, I'm not sure. So it's part of this training. I mean, on the flip side, I'm regularly getting referrals when the GP clearly doesn't know And is there a part of this that's training each other on each other's jobs? I will certainly make sure your role is described. And if anyone wants to write me a quick summary of what you want to say to that, because I can add it into the, when we yeah. speak to the clinic, I'm happy to, I'd love to have that. And then we can make sure it's very important we will understand what we do. And it's very important we respect what you do, because you have just as important role as I do. If we do anything, you don't speak to them, I won't see them. So, you know, we all have to work together. So, right up the ranks, you know, from here to secondary care, you know, it has to be. So, it's very important. Um, I don't know about the one stop shop, and that's your homework today is to go and find out what probably one stop shop. They may have an instant, sometimes you've got point of care testing, but some. I was mentioned in one of them. Yeah. Is that some, possible for kind of everything you might be covering? It's possible for certainly cholesterol, HbA1c, I think renal, but I'm not sure about all the others. So I don't just depend. I don't know how, do you know, Lauren, how Bromley are going to do it? Not no. I'll tell you this No. I mean, when you're doing tests for multimorbidity, it will be the works usually. So it'll be a whole load of blood. And there'll be, if you look on, there'll be a whole probably a team breast thing that you, you get given because this is what you do. I think something that was expecting as well, so we can set and something but I think something we expected as well, and I imagine this one of the people as well hear this the most, is that actually the social um, factors and the kind of non-health factors are going to be the, the barriers or the non-physical health factors are going to be the barriers. And actually, before you can start even engaging with those kind of the outcomes of physical health checks, if someone has additional care and responsibilities or has um like I know mental health is rough, but you know, if, if their depression is preventing them from being able to engage with their physical health anyway, actually from this perspective of what results you get one, when you kind of buy yourself time in the sense that you need to engage with the social or kind of non-physical health factors first. So that gives you time if they need to be physical tests that you can't get immediate results. Before. It's kind of like, in, in my opinion, I think this will slowly become more prevalent. It doesn't matter anyway, because actually that person is not ready to deal with their physical health. And I get medically, that's really important. But what this project is trying to recognise is that, and um, Rebecca mentioned it before, this idea that people have got different agendas. And it's not to say that any agenda is wrong, but it does mean that people can't always meet each other kind of in the same place. So as a GC, for example, my agenda would presumably be that their physical health is kind of kept to a good, in a good way. But tough luck. We're saying let's try and meet them where they're at. And they're not ready to meet their physical health yet. So in terms of how quickly do we need physical health uh, kind of results, my opinion, right or wrong me, is that we're assuming that we're going to need them instantly and we're not as all of you know that the kind of challenges that these people face are not going to be solved instantly it's going to take time so i think that's that's going to come out as we sort of trial the projects and learn but my opinion is that we actually have time to get physical health results because we're actually trying to prioritize an individual's values first and often those are the kind of social barriers and yeah okay. That is, that is true. That is very true. And again, you can pick that up on your phone call. It's that 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 conversation you may pick up when they I don't want to come in. We'll look at ways you can say, oh, can you just tell me why you don't? Is there any, is there an issue with the surgery? Is there is there something blocking you coming in? What's the reason? And they may just say, 
But they made you say, well, actually, I had a really bad experience with GC and I just can't bear it and I don't trust them anymore. Okay, let's see what we can do about that. Can anything help you? So you're unpicking it. So you, it starts from you. It starts from the moment you pick up that phone. It's to unpicking all the barriers. And you're right, social is going to become so important because it is a blocker. They can't get childcare to come to the surgery. They're not going to, they're not going to be able to come, are they? So we, not you can all into childcare, but you might be able to sort something out or, you know, so it's just, it is about listening to every, the whole story. Okay. And bloods, yeah. So step one, okay, this is an idea. And I think from you have probably done this for their one-stop shop. And I think I did, you'd sent a communication to um, explain the project from, you don't know, do you? You haven't done it from the time. But that's what we've done in Lewisham, I know that. So some sort of really easy patient-friendly letter should go out explaining this project. Why is it important? Because we want to look after you. We want to um, give you the best that is possible. It's like you've been in the changing. We get it. We've listened to the feedback. We know we need to be more efficient. This project is about that. So it's about selling it to the patient. Actually, think, actually, oh, actually you know what? That's talking a different language. It's not just like, you need to have your blood pressure check. Please book into the surgery. They're fed up with those texts. They've had them all the time. Let's change the language. Please come in. This is a chance. We really want to make a difference. We want to help you. We want to support you, whatever, managing your health. Please come in for these, whatever, however you model you've chosen. Um, and if there's any issues, please reply and let us know what they are. I can't come in because you've always offered me an appointment at four o'clock when I'm picking up my child from school. Okay, I've let me learn. So it's just, we need to just be listening to what they're saying back. As I say, from your phone to along with it's where we start learning. Um, as I say, it depends how you're doing it. So Bromley will be coming whatever day they're running that one-stop shop, you know, and they'll they'll do it and they'll have probably different rooms and you'll be in one, Sarah will be another, you know, it'll be working along the lines, probably something like that. The stage is different. So, so, so you'll work out. And I think your question is, Lambus, is anyone from Greenwich? Yay, hello Greenwich. So you'll go back to Greenwich and say, what are we doing? I've been on this talk. I don't know why I was sent on this talk. Can you tell me about the project? So go find out about this project because the more you know about it, the more empowered you are. Get excited about it. It's a really exciting project. This is a new way of working. This is about thinking of the whole patient. Every suitcase they have in their system, we need to be thinking about. Um, and explain and we'll talk about how we explain it to patients and see if we can get them to unblock so name me some long-term conditions shout them out i've only got six up there oh well i'm not there but yes thank you very much any more what's that diabetes yeah asthma asthma hypertension hypertension angina pkd ckd obesity god you've got so many i've only got six go on Dementia, 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 yeah, absolutely. Cancer, yeah. Cancer, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've only got six, excuse me, but they're the base, they're the kind of top pieces, aren't they? So, but there are all the ones you said. Thank you very much for remembering those other ones because there are lots of others I've only got, but actually, I like fine. Um, but this is this is a very where it kind of the seed came from the fact that we're not really picking up this enough, and this links into all of the conditions, just making sure they're keeping something okay as well. <laughs> okay, so how do you think a patient might feel if they've got one or more long-term conditions? Fear. Scared. Depressed. Depressed. Denial. Anxious. Denial. In denial. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Not coming in, I'm fine, thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else? Angry. Angry. That's a obsessed. Oh yeah, you can get that's a good way, the other way around, yeah. Anyone else? See what I've got. There you go. Powerless. And that's another thing we really want to change with this. We want it to be two way. We're not just talking down to them anymore. That model's gone. We're, we're working with them. It's a two way process or a three way process if they've got a carer or, you know, a whole, there's a whole load of other issues going on. So we're working with the family. Frightened. When you're ringing them up, saying, can you come in for your appointment? Oh my God, what's wrong? Oh, my God, their anxiety can go through the roof, can't it? And stuck. Nothing's changed in 20 years. Nothing. What are you going to do about it? My diabetes has been up in the sky for years. No one's ever bothered or even managed to sort me out. So they've lost faith and they've already stuck and angry, yeah. So you've got all that when you ring them up, haven't you? That's what you get when you ring them up. 
Um, and you get the other way. The, yes, I'll come in for my review. I used to work in a place patient uh, serve uh, perhaps in Blackheath, very different population. And they were they were literally queuing at the door to come in. It's just a whole different ethos. And I went to do it St John's and it's a very different field. It just depends on your population. So generally, what do you get when you ring up? I know I know about literature. What do you get in, in Bromley when you ring up patients to come in? Interesting. Not interested. And what do they say? Do they tell you why? Not particularly, because I'm doing like a big at home project at the moment. I have a lot of communication with the patients. Yeah. The amount no, outweighs the amount that do. They just, they know, no, I'm not interested. It's fine. I've just said got to when I need to. And okay. There's only so much. So little, much you can say. Is, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Anyone else? I think basically for lumbar, we kind of have a bit of patients not picking up their calls. Not picking up their calls. They see that's, doctor's that's surgery ringing. Yeah. The way we try to help for like that care team, because we have a team called that care is when you try to call a patient like once or twice, or you yeah. send them a letter and then you respond, put it as a call. Right. So if maybe one day they come in to request a medication or something, mm -hmm. maybe whoever has a from desk is able to call. Like getting my team. I've got this person here you're trying to contact. Good idea. Make notes, everyone. That's a good one. Put it in your cough boxes or a note and alert on the screen so they contact the team that are doing it. It is hard, isn't it? And it is, it can feel like a really thankless task. I think as a clinician, I don't see that bit. I'll just see the patients that can't walk in the door, don't try. So I don't have that frustration because basically people are sitting in front of me, they've obviously chosen to come in. So I get it easier. But you get that. And I must admit, I was at, I was at a, um, uh, an exhibition last week. We were selling a product. And uh, it's that feeling of, oh, excuse me, you mind listening to me? Come and have a look. I'm trying to sell you this. And I, I remember I get my stomach would go, oh, I don't want to be rejected again. I can't, I don't have a good face. Do you? No. And I do the same, don't you? You go to an exhibition, sort of, no, I'm fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, you know, and that's a bit like when you ring them, isn't it? They're like, <laughs> And they see that now we've changed it from no caller ID. They know their doctor surgeries are ringing them now. So even that hasn't worked, has it? So they're kind of like, oh, Sam again. So yeah, it is getting around with that. And I think we just need to think about how we can break that. And I always believe there's a way. So we've got to find it between us. Um, okay. So this is how you feel as care coordinators. I put reception, but it's everybody. You know, you've got the doctor and the patient, you're kind of like, you're getting shouted at. We're going, why have you not got that appointment in? Where are they? Why are they not coming in? And the patient's like, oh, you know, putting you in another direction. And this is how the patient feels. I did make a chuckle. The doctor will see you as a little camera up there. That's how you get it. <laughs> it's all become very impersonal, isn't it? And that's a, a product of COVID, isn't it? People feel you don't go in, you know, and my mum, she's in, she's Greenwich, sorry. But, you know, someone said her surgery seems to do this whole thing about ringing first, which I think is not a waste of time. She's deaf. She can't hear very well. And so she just wants to go in. She just wants to go and have that face to face thing. And it's just that blocker, isn't it? We've got to take all these blockers out. Yeah, because I was just going to say, because obviously I've got patients that can't read and write. And when you try to, to uh, like explain the phone, they still get very flustered because they still don't fully understand. So it's trying to find a barrier around that. It yeah, does. it is. And it's acknowledging and getting them to be confident to tell you they really struggle with it. It's worth noting can they read and write or understand English. Because again, that's a really big one, isn't it? Yeah, it is hard. So we've got to find we've got to find ways around that. I have I've had several patients where they've got a mobile phone, but it's only a basic phone. Yeah. And they're really fed up and they text it links to things. Yeah. I was They've got a great appointment yeah. every time they, so they, they just avoid the surgery. And then they just block us because they just think, oh, all they ever want is data. They don't care about them. They're right. They just, they just they just want to tick them off. Yeah. You know how I spell that you know, the one where you're asking health demographics, where were you born? That's the cause issue. The way I sell it, and it is true actually, I say, I know I'm we're being nosy, I'm not going to deny that. I said, but this, what this, what the understanding the areas, um, uh, ethnicity, the predominant areas where it helps them work out what what's needed in certain areas in relation to if you've got a lot of Afro Caribbeans, you might have more diabetes or more high blood pressure. So it does actually help us. So I say, yes, we're bit, I admit it, we're being nosy, <laughs> but we're also doing it for another reason. So and then, then usually they tell me, to be fair, but it's just, it's, it's, it's tough. Why do you want to know that? 
I know. We get we get lumber with don't we? It's not, not easy. Um so um anywhere, stop me so far. Anything anyone wants to add? Lauren, anything I've forgotten so far? Did that phone go up? Was that me shadowing it? I didn't, it's still. It's getting excited, don't think it would come an animation. So first step is obviously calling the patient, and we're going to look at this. So this is the script I wrote out. Now, it may not work, but this is just an idea. So I put, hello, my name is Rebecca. I'm calling from Bamber Health Centre in Greenwich um, to offer you to take part in our a project. This is an amazing opportunity. May, for, please come and join us. Um, we want to support people to have long, more than one lung condition, which means less visits to the surgery for you. We want to work with your needs and support you as well as keeping you healthy and well. It will involve, now it depends how you do it. So Bromley, it will involve a one-stop shop. Lewisham, it will involve two visits, um, whatever you decide in Greenwich and, and Lambeth and Southwark. Um, would you like me to book an appointment? That's just a, my thing. But that's one song. Patient might say to you, what might a patient say to that? No, thanks. No, thank you. So what might you say after that? Well, I get to see my my favourite GP. Is that what they say? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, I get to it. What else they might they say? Because don't forget, they've got you on the phone. Oh, my God. I've got through to the GP surgery. They were on me. Right, where's the shopping list? Yeah. 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 I've got you on the phone now. Right, so I need this. I need that medication, I need that. Can you please order that? I need a six mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my God, I only rang you up to offer you an appointment. Yeah. But that's, they've got you. Because how many times have we told I waited, I was 60 in line to get through to the surgery, which is the usual complaint. But that would be a good opportunity, even if they come with a long list, because you can say to them, come and then we'll get them. Exactly, and you can actually use it. So, will I see my favourite GP? Oh, well, you know what? Let's see what we can do. Your favourite GP works on this day, but it might be a little bit of a wait for your favourite GP. But in the meantime, could I book you in for some blood tests and I'll make sure that you see your favourite GP for the follow-up? Just an idea. I know it's breaking rules. Sometimes I have to break the rules on the appointment book. But you've got them in. Yeah? Or what other excuse do you might you get? Show one out. You must have them. Yeah, you say I've got a long-term condition. What even is diabetes? What is diabetes? Yeah. And we're going to go through a little bit of that. What? Who would know how to explain that? What is diabetes? Some people don't even know they've got it today. You're ringing them up and they're pre-diabetic and they're like, I know that. Yeah. Or they've got CKD and no one's talking. And then you're like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you really think on your feet. Is that common that um, people are sort of diagnosed or, or coded with that like, chronic kidney disease? Yes, and I will talk about that. And they're not told about that. But that's changing. Yeah, absolutely. For years, they've had in their cough box CKD3, CKD2, CKD4, and no one's actually sat down and explained it because people haven't understood it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're changing that now. It's going to change to people. And I'll talk a little bit about ACR so you can understand. We'd be getting these sent slides emailed to us at all. £50, pounds, I'll send you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think I need to apologise. <laughs> oh, no, of course you will. Yeah, I mean, you can take more than what you want, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it just gives you some ideas to pick out. So you do get them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, have a think. In fact, I might give you a little project. That we can have a look at this. Have a think what the blockers are. Because maybe we can think between us for how we could unblock the favourite GP and block this and stuff. The the other one might be gone. <laughs> block of me because I, I've kind of started to notice that we're having more people speak different languages. Yes. If you call a patient and you listen all of theirs and they go. I Sorry, can't I can't understand. Yes. yes. That is really true. Now, tell me if you can't. We need to think that is a big blocker, especially in Southeast, isn't it? It is a massive blocker. And we need to think about that actually because obviously, if I have a patient in my room, I can do a, a language line. Yeah. yeah, and you can now dial in, can't you? You can, but we'd have to almost have a whole list that needed language line, and you'd have to have longer doing it. But I don't know how we think about that because it's true, it's a massive blocker. And can I just ask what about people with learning disabilities? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So they might need to bring their carer in, or they might not understand. Oh, they might not have. They might not have a carer. So what would you say? So you say that what's what's being said to you? So they just not understood what you're telling them. Is that what you're, yeah. yeah. And that's a tough one too. That 
they don't understand what you're telling them. They must have, do they have anybody that look, that could help with the phone call? Is it, can you ask, is there anybody with you? Can you do a joint and have a loud speaker and speak together? Have you ever, have you, because often they will, they really struggle. They should have somebody around, I would have thought, or can I bring you back when you're with somebody and you just make a note of it? And yes, it's time to see me, but this is the whole point, isn't it? We're highlighting that this person doesn't understand what we're bringing about, so actually maybe Anne needs to have a look at the situation and see what needs to be done to support that. So it's about what needs to maybe happen is is not just it's not just that not saying it is but that how it feels is this list of patients we get through and I think managers need to think differently that actually you might have to highlight people that actually this list here I've got four that need Anne I'm just highlighting around sorry um as a social prescriber and I've got four that need the health and well-being code and I've got three that need a language line appointment and you, you don't forget them we don't forget them we make a note and then we go to the manager and say, actually, these are patients I've got through, but this is the blockers. We learn what those blockers are and we see what we can do. So maybe if, let's say, is it Lambert's got lots of Portuguese, a high yeah, number of Portuguese? Yeah. So maybe we get a, a social prescriber, we, we get a care coordinator who speaks Portuguese. I know in, in one in my one of our services, we've got a Spanish speaking yeah. GP. So we literally have an appointment for Spanish patients to see that GP is, if that's all how clinic is. So is it worth thinking? Is there somebody that could literally the main languages that you've got in Lambeth or Lewisham or Greenwich, you have somebody of that language. And when I worked in Hackney, I did work in Hackney, sorry, I was a diabetes nurse in Hackney and I used to go around to all the surgeries. And one surgery had a permanent Turkish Turkish interpreter because the population was so high for Turkish. So it's about maybe thinking about getting the manager to think, actually, I need to see if I can hire one that speaks more than one language. And that would then solve your problem because actually that would go into Portuguese and the patient would understand immediately. And we have it flagged on the system, needs Portuguese care coordinates or these, you know, panel speaking care coordinates or whatever. I know you can't do every language and we need to think outside the box, but it's certainly something we should be highlighting because that's a blocker, isn't it? It's a massive blocker. And I think patients who don't speak English, well, even for me, it's so easy. And I try, I desperately try when you're in a rush and everything takes, and they've forgotten to book your double appointment. And you're sitting there going, oh, really? but I, I have to run late because actually they deserve just as much time as somebody can understand anything I'm saying first time. So, and it's the same with the initial phone call. Let's not just write them off because they don't speak English because you haven't got time because you've got 50 other patients on that list to read. Let's see if we can work out a way around it. So I think if you can troubleshoot and make a list of those issues and you take them to your manager or flag them to us as a, a blog, so I'm kind of helping. Um, then we can maybe work with that and see if we can look at changing that as a, as this is the chart. This is new, right? So we're going to learn and we're going to change things, but we need to know what the issues are to do it. So from your point of view, as first point of contact, tell me the blocks. Tell us the blocks and then we can look at how we can fix it. Yeah. Any other blocks? Just quickly. Just on the, on the someone who doesn't speak English. Yeah. Run. I think a few patients there. Quite often I've found they can get a text, they get a friend who does speak English. Yes. Text. So I can text them and say, I'm going to call you, I've got you an appointment next week, but it's fine. It'd be nice if you can't make it. And they can, and they can go for a translate. Yeah. Interpreter, yeah. That console. And, and they, they're they able to read that. And they can't even if they won't answer them. Yeah. So it's making notes on that system, on that little front alert. This patient will not understand you when you ring them up. You need to find a way of speaking to them differently. Yeah. And, you know, I'll text them in Spanish or do Google Translate. So you can write a text in Spanish. Yeah, Google Translate, can't you? And then you know. And, and you can allow a response. Have you understood this? I always say, I, I often, if I haven't turned up for an appointment, I ring them and say, please, can you just reply to me and let me know you're okay? Because, because then I can understand if they're, you know, if something's not wrong or whatever. So it's just, you know, the same with you. You could do the same in accurate. I'm just trying to get a hold of you. And maybe you can, maybe, let's say I'm just thinking about the patient doesn't understand. You put the phone down and you text them, look at their language, change it to Google Translate, allow a response. Then you can say, let's say, actually, no, I really can't understand, but actually, if you bothered to text me in my language, I understand. So that's another way of thinking about it. It's just thinking of different ideas of how we can break these, these blockers that we've got, yeah? Any other ideas? So we get a lot of people saying, oh, I can't do that around my work shift or, yeah. you know. 
So that needs to be fed back. Everyone I'm ringing can't come in at the time you put the clinic on. So what's the point of putting the clinic on? Yeah. So actually, I mean, we, we're running it on a Saturday. Probably books and it all class. Um, it's great. When they give me half an hour appointment, um, I'm dreading, I'm dreading Saturday. It's fully booked, 20 minutes away. There's just so much to do. But, you know, that's one thing we're doing. But you could do it maybe a late. We all have to work on late now. So, again, maybe a text to your patient saying, we want to run this clinic, this your list you're going to get. What would be the best time, just generally, for you to come? And you get the majority, you put the clinic at that time. So we're working with, we want to work with you. So if you send your letter of, this is what we're doing. And actually, at the bottom of it, you say, or oh, send it by text, however. Please let us know, and you can give them different times of day. 7 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock at night, Saturdays. And they might come back and your majority of things that actually we need it at 6 o'clock at night, 6 to 11. And then you can say, right, we've answered your, we've answered. And the next letter goes out, we've listened to you. The clinic is going to be running at this time. Then immediately you send patients feel like, actually, you've heard me. You've listened. You know, maybe one person didn't get what they wanted, but most of them did. So that's another way of kind of unblock and also get them to trust us because the more you listen, they break their barriers down as well. And we get through to them. And work goes round actually quite quickly, as you know, bad morning, but good also. Okay. So this agenda thing that Lauren was talking about, massive. Yeah. They may come in with, as I say, their mother died yesterday, or they've got an the eviction notice, or their child's really sick. Or whatever, I can't think of the slow to them. But you know, your agenda is to get the appointment, their agenda is this is what's bothering me. Okay, so we've got to really think about that. So the hidden agenda refers to that, you know, it's like the um the, the hidden self. It's like they might not want to tell you these things going on, but you you've rung them up this appointment and that or whatever, and they don't want to tell you what actually what's blocking them is what was the case that it was a cab driver, wasn't it, with his children? There was one case that we had so the guy's a cab driver and he actually can't come in at the times we wanted to because he's actually he's the main owner for the family but he might not want to tell you that because i might be embarrassed to tell you that so it's like he might be blocking you so i can't come in i can't come in i can't come in but there may be a reason why he can't come in or he might be worried about other things as you say like you know health and well mental health issues or grieving or finance or what else just depression you know, we need to go, you know, feeling lonely. Actually, I don't want, I mean, I just don't want to talk. I'm too low. I don't want to be, you know, prodded and choked by the GP surgery. So when you're ringing up, as I say, it's that they've got their suitcase of stuff as well. And it's just remembering, remembering that. Um, so your list is long. The, I was going to write a poem. I started, it sounds like a poem to start with. It never went anywhere. So your list is long. The pressure is on. <laughs> the only thing of the next line of the poem, but um, Quaff is around the corner two weeks away um but you're asked of it so it's the ask and it's your ask it's your priority because you've got somebody on your back saying have you found those 25 patients today their ask is not their priority and that's really hard because you feel like you failed if I have patients to bring up and I sometimes do get given this so I do kind of know can you bring all these patients up and find out about their child ins and you may get 10 out of the 20 you feel like you fail I feel like I've failed. I've got nowhere no one's answering and then you get ner I get nervous from your mother because you're worried about what abuse you're going to get or negativity or whatever. So it is a tough, it's tough. I recognise this is a really tough job, but we just need to see what we can do to help. So with clinicians, this is interesting. Who goes to the doctor's surgery and the doctor's like this? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, can I help you? Okay. Yes. Hate that. I get so angry when they yeah. do that to me. I, I actually told myself to be a really rude once. Because it's just not the way. I wouldn't treat my patient like that. And sometimes I have to move my EMIS screen so it's there. So I'm not doing it because you've never got two screens now. So I'm like there. So I, the patient's there and I'm there. So I'm actually able to look at them because otherwise you don't want to sit there and pour your heart out to somebody who's got their back to you all the time. And you're not going to open up either, are you? And and same with the phone call. They can hear when you feel stressed and busy. They will hear it in your voice. Um, my GP surgery, which is in Charlton, is... My God, the receptionist sometimes I'm like, I'm scared. To I'm already on the defensive before I get through because I know she's going to be really rude to me. And that's just because they're stressed. And they, if, I, if it wasn't like that, then everybody relaxes. And you all know that from bringing your own doctor's surgeries up, yeah? So we've got to think of it from that side of it as well. Um, GPs or clinicians, um, we, as I say, we've got our machines. Um, so it's just really patients end up being frustrated. 
yeah it's the clinician's agenda so they might feel like it's your agenda you're not listening to me you're not booking me with my favorite gp you don't understand me you don't understand why so they're immediately just defensive and don't want to hear so it's reassuring so if you're really nice that patient on the phone i reckon they'll probably open up i'm not saying you're not really nice but if you get past that barrier of defensiveness they bring up um some patients um are burdened by problems and say they've got in other issues at home as they don't want to hear you and they might need this you know if they cut they're talking about they want a certificate at the end of the day they don't really they just want to be off work so there's just different reasons so it's very difficult to uncover that and i say for you on the phone it's letting them feel heard and that's hard sometimes when you've got 50 patients to bring up and you think time um, is hard. But if they feel like they've heard, apparently there's a, there's a slide coming up. Clinicians interrupt after 18 seconds. That's not long, is it? It's not <laughs> no, it's pretty appalling. It is. Research has shown if you let a patient say their piece, not everybody, believe me, two and a half minutes should do it. They usually get their story out in two and a half minutes. Let them talk. Now, I don't know how long you get given for a phone call. How long? Two minutes? You should get a 10, 10. Good. So two and a half of that minute, let the patient talk. Hello, I'm ringing you from the GP surgery. How are you today? Is it OK to talk? Can I, are you free to talk to me? That immediately, I'm sure you do this anyway, disarms a little bit of their anger. And then, then you say, and you say your piece and then let, let, let them talk back to you. No, and let them talk. And just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go off peace in the sense of like, yes, you're ready to put an appointment, but listen, obviously don't talk about neighbours or big brothers. Sometimes I do, actually, if it breaks the barrier down. But, you know, try not to get into that. should be there for half an hour. But, you know, listening, screening and then summarising back, which we go to that we'll go on to later on. So I hear that you don't want to come in for GP because you can't see your favourite GP ever. I hear that. That's the main issue. OK, let me see what I can do. But in the meantime, can I? What do you think about? So immediately you've heard, they've heard you've heard them because you've listened back and you're actually trying to do something about it and you will disarm them. Whenever I greet a patient, I always try, one, however awful I feel, try and smile from the eyes because that's also smile from the eyes. And even with the phone call, they can hear if you're smiling. Um, and I always try to just, if they're coming in to see me, oh, if I see it's their birthday, Oh, it was your birthday yesterday. How was it? In me, like, really? How do you know? You know, but the fact that you bothered to even mention it. I saw my GP yesterday. It's my birthday today. And he didn't mention it. I thought, oh, you didn't look at my birthday. You didn't mention it. It's just nice to think about things like that. Or, you know, um, well, if it's a child for a child, then there's always comments on their Superman outfit. You know, engage with that child. Engage. Oh, you smell nice today. Oh, you look nice today. It just disarms. On the phone, they want to hear you're smiling. They want to hear you're smiling because you can hear it. Okay, so that immediately will disarm them a little bit. They're on the defensive. I'm on the defensive when someone calls me. What do you want? <laughs> I feel so sorry for those market people who ring me. I'm not. <laughs> I haven't got time. But this is what, you know, I'm not, I'm, I hold my hands up. But GP surgery should be slightly different, we hope. And if they are angry, they're angry for a reason. Why? Why don't they like us anymore? What have we done as a surgery? Or what has let them down to make them so angry? And that's what we need to find out. OK, so as I said, there you go. I was ahead of myself. Two and a half minutes. Can we afford two and a half minutes? Let's give them two. Two minutes out of your ten, if you get ten. See what they've got to say, if you can. So ask the question, let them rant, and then see what comes up. OK, um, yeah, listen to the patient's story. Try and prevent them, and this is more clinical, but if they are talking about clinical stuff, it's hard, isn't it? So they open up and tell you their clinical, clinical history. Yeah. 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 What do you do when they do that? Because you can pick up on cues with this, and we will look at that. So I always say that I'm not clinical, but I certainly ask the doctor for advice and get back to you, or, you yeah. know. Try and find an answer, even if it's time for thing. I'm going to put you, oh, I can hear that you've, you're really not, not feeling very well today. And and you say you're coughing a bit of blood, but let me just introduce you to doctors. What I'll do is I'll make no sleep sack. Yeah, so yeah, just make sure they've heard that you've heard them and that you've, you know, reassured them. And then obviously summarising back 
So I've, so I've heard that you want to book your favourite GP. So what we've done is, just to be back, I've booked you in for the nurse to get your bloods and your foot check and everything done. But I have booked you with the GP with a little bit of a wait because he's so popular. Well, that's really not an option. So <laughs> is there another GP, you could say to him, is there another GP that you like that you know? So I'm met? actually thinking of a particular yeah, no, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there is no, and I'm struggling to engage with her a bit, quite a bit at the moment. But he only wants to see her GP. And what's the blocker with the oh, GP with? She said that he knows everything about her in her whole life. Yeah, but who knows what to go through with me? Can she not? So where's the GP that she wants to see? Is he not around? He, well, he is, but he's uh, he's sort of got more management sort of side of it. Does he have any appointments? Barely. But even if he has one or two, she might have to wait six months. Or no, you could say something know. like, I would say something like, does he? Well, I would say, yeah. okay, no. I'm looking for your bloods, but I'm going to toss yeah. your GP. You desperate. Yeah. He just, I'm just saying that he just does triage on the last yeah. That's it. But you could task him, do you know what I mean? And say, let me, let me just find out for you. Yeah. I'm going to task your favourite GP that you really want yeah. to be. And I'm going to tell him the situation and I'll see what he says. Because then yeah. you're trying. And if that GP then yeah. comes back yeah. and he yeah. says, actually, I've tasked, I've run the GP, I've texted the GP. He's come back to me over task and said, okay, he's going to fit you in. When next time he does clinical, or he's going to say, do you know what? He's not clinical anymore, but he really suggests sure. he or she yeah, suggests yeah. this GP. Suggest, yeah. So would you be prepared to see that he's going to fill that GP in? Yeah. So you've okay. then gone, you've taken it out of your hands, you put it in the GP she yeah. wants to see, and then you've, you've kind of packed it with it manual. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Just have a, have a think. It's thinking outside the box, talking aloud to your colleagues as well. I've got this patient who just doesn't want to come in. What do you do? You almost need an MDT for you, you know, like almost like a non-responder. I'm not, this is no joke. I'm speaking at show loud here, Lauren. Fuck this down. She's my secretary. You know, like the patients who just won't respond. Because actually, that might be out of your hands. That actually might be someone that you've got a specific GP or nurse that actually brings those difficult, not difficult, not difficult, the, what should we call them? Non-responders. Non that's a nice word. And the non-responding patients up, yeah, to say, Let's see if we can break the barrier. Let's get some another person to come in. Not that we're disregarding what you've done, but you've done everything you can. They're still not responding. Or maybe in that meeting, we might come up with a solution like that. So you ring them back and say, well, actually, I'm going to do this. What do you think? You know, I can actually task. I'm going to task Rebecca. This patient only wants to see you. Most people do that. This patient wants to see you. Can you please call them when you've got time? I get a lot of tasks about that. So, you know, you can do that as well. If we don't have access to individual surgery that's we arrange the PCN either is we're all phoning from an unknown number. Um, so you don't so I respond because we do um and there's a, there's definitely a challenge. Some surgery might be easier than others to okay. liaise with. But yeah, but we don't ever you don't. So in this project we need to find a way to make that better communication. But I'm just thinking maybe there's a you've got the generic email with the direct line the perhaps manager with the list of patients but they can link. There needs to be, I don't know, I'm not I'm not in that circle. Yeah. So okay, so we need to think outside the box and see how you can get yeah. in there. So you work do you work with Sarah? So Sarah could take your baby glasses, you know. You need someone nice on the one side of each surgery. So you work across six surgeries. Yeah. 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 And then another block. Some surgeries that have one nice person because maybe I'll get a favour on. <laughs> and it shouldn't be a favour. That's, 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 that's my role. Yeah, I'm in one six hundred and fifty two thousand patients, so I'm very spoiled, I forget. Yeah, so it's hard. So it's not a sense. No, no. So we need to think, again, okay, another point we'll make note of, that's definitely an issue. How do we communicate across the PCN that's not joined up, the sense of the surgery is not joined up? So we need to think how to do that. That needs to be there. It is really, really important. So part of this project will be to get that better, better line of communication. So that when you get called in these projects to talk about, so that needs to be fed back. That is a blocker and it shouldn't be. Yeah, use this project to break it because the whole point, as Lauren said, is we need to talk to the patients, get the patient's social side sorted out, which is as important as the physical side. As diabetes goes, I often see people who just medicalise diabetes. Don't medicalise diabetes. I have literally taken people off medicine when you, when you educate them on diet. Take the time to talk about their diet and lifestyle. 
it, mm. you know, you don't have to medicalize everything. There's okay. lots of other ways around. And I think we forget that as teachers. We get very guilty of the beauty stuff, but it's not just clinical. Okay, so patient's agenda. So this is what you're up against. You're human too, as we've just said. It hurts at the end of the day. If you've had 50 patients hang up on you, you go home feeling pretty low. It's not a nice feeling. And that's why, again, we might suggest this. I'm going to suggest the group. Maybe suggest the group once every, I don't know, week, month, whatever, that you get an hour, just like the conditions do, to talk about the difficult patients that you're not getting through to. Because actually, we are all responsible for that. It's not just you. Yeah, we do. We all need to be helping and jumping in that pool with you and seeing how we can sort it out. And we can come up with solutions. So, again, should be the social prescribers. Everybody should be in that meeting, at least the representative. How we can solve. Well, you might say, Anne, okay, that patient you're trying to ring up, we won't go. Actually, do you know what? I think see an issue. Let me ring them up, see if I can break it that way. So, we try a different angle. So, yeah, so let's have a think. So, think that's about you have a voice too. Don't let top management dictate everything. They're not on the ground doing what you do every day. Yeah, you're doing this job every day, day in and day. You are the expert. So please find your voice and shout. Your ideas count. Please make them count because you'll change things, you know? Okay. I've just, this is my idea. This is me, right? Okay, I don't ring people up all the time, but this is just some of the things I think you might get. I'm not, I don't have time to come in twice. This is for the, if you did that model. Um, I can't think about my health right now. I've got too much lower back pain. Where might you put them? Busier. And now we've got them in practice, have we? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I cannot think about, I have nowhere to live, which I've talked about. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I need to put them in with Anne or whoever else social prescribing was. I need to find a way of getting prescribing that. Please find out how you prescribe, how you refer to your social prescribers. There is, a, I think there's a little form on certainly on my image, I can just click and it comes up with the form. Please find out how you do health and wellbeing coach. Please find out the physios. So you have a whole armory of people that you can also sign those to, as well as booking them in. Because by doing that, you've already got, you're caring about that block. And then hopefully then we'll say, okay, if you do that, I will come in and see the nurse and get my blood stuff. Then the nurse How are you doing, everybody? What's the time? We're talking for an hour and 10 minutes. Do you want a break? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I need a break. So we'll do two breaks. Is 20 minutes enough to get down and come up? Because yeah. we, we, yeah? Should we do it 20? Yeah. You go. <laughs> that means we'll be back at quarter two. Yeah. Uh, 10.45. Yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm not convinced at all. I don't know what you want to have to do. I'm not convinced at all. I don't know what you want to have to do. I'm not convinced at all. I don't know what you want to have to do. I'm not convinced at all. I don't know what you want to have to do. I'm not convinced at all. no, we went to the wrong place. <laughs> 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 but we're actually able to help with the social issues. That's what this actually is. Because, okay, I I mean, you can't tell me a mother of the people. I mean, you can't tell me a mother of the people. I mean, you can't tell me a mother of the people. 
how we how we see ourselves is, is really important um do you remember the best teacher you've ever had i can tell you the worst teacher ever had. Yeah. but you always remember then you know, those important people in your life that encouraged you i had a teacher who told me i couldn't draw so i drew a boat and they told me i could look like an old man i drew something else it was my first okay and it stuck with me forever i never mm. draw now you know oh always oh, come back um and the work you know the best best teacher i'll give you my worst anyone got a best teacher Set them on their way. I can't remember why, but I do remember having a best teacher. But I, I can't remember why. You just felt good when they were in the classroom. Remember, yeah, but it was like first babies or something like that. And maybe she didn't let me draw or something or paint. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know, but I just remember she was always being kind. Best and, ones. Yeah. yeah. But perception is really key. So they might perceive you, perceive them, they perceive you. We're all kind of scout each other out. So what's the too many cooks for the broth or Another one? Too many chiefs and not Indians. Uh, <laughs> hang on. Oh, let's see, look, look at the positive side. Too many cooks for the broth or many... Many hands make that work. Oh. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Absent makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. I can't think of that one. Anyone? <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> no? <laughs> out, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and last one, blood is thicker than water. So you know, <laughs> so you know, it's just different perceptions, isn't it, of different things. So you know that someone might always think that way round, but actually, I'm happy with loads of cooks in the kitchen because it's making it easier for me because I've got lots of people to wash up or whatever. So it's a, it's how we perceive things, okay? So, so. Obviously, Ren is not here, she's done well, but you might, so think of an example, I want you to think of this, but first, like, so I might be called resilient, to back an R, resilient, remember, but Rebecca, or I might be called, think of an alternative adjective to describe myself, reliable, Ren, Rebecca, that's two positives, but you might think of how you think you are, and maybe your neighbour, not being mean, might see you differently. So have a just chat amongst yourselves. So first names, we've got Suzette, Sassy Suzette, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Or, you know, so have a think. So how would you see on an S? So how would you describe Suzette? So have a chat with your neighbour and just think, because again, this is a different way to see. Give five minutes, have a little chat. Give five minutes, have a little chat. I'm <laughs> 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 
She's in the jet. Very in the jet. It's got to be it's S. What's S? Oh, oh, S. oh, S. oh, S. oh you got a thing on the jet. She's in the jet. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one more quickly over here. Okay, Lucy. 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 Lucy.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, you've got, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, sunshine yellow is lovely, but what's the yeah. good? This one, excitable, frantic, indiscreet. Oh, it's not very kind, is it? And hasty. So understanding who you are is really important when you ring people. Understanding what character you are, because, you know, if you're ringing another red, there's two reds on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a difficult conversation so yes it is quite difficult okay so let's say we understand ourselves it'd be easy to support and communicate with our patients and it, it, it is so think about it so and this is the bit i think a lot of you want some facts up your sleeve so what am i coming in for why do you want that urine test for goodness sake you keep yeah. nagging me about that urine test oh for god's sake i've sent my blood pressure in six times to you what are you talking about so Hooks. Shut up my hook. <laughs> I'm always, and I do this to clinicians, you've got to have the hooks. You've got to hook that patient's interest because if you can hook them with something, you've got them. Yeah. And it's like, and I do this all the time in mind. I'm not taking any blood pressure medication. But do you realize that? And I can explain it now to them and then I go, oh, okay, then maybe I will. So it's just having that little bit of information up your seat. So did you know that 50% of heart attacks and strokes are associated with high blood pressure? Okay, if you've got these slides, that's the British Heart Foundation. Save it on your desktop, have sticky notes, learn all these little facts that you can pull out the air, because you'll forget when you're on the phone. But if you have them on the on the on your desktop, just like you know, just put the useful facts there. Um, they're useful. So it's really important we control your blood pressure because if we don't, you're putting yourself at much more risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. And I don't want that for you. So can we do anything to help you? This, this is quite useful. Look, you won't need to go through. I'm just telling you this for you. It's quite interesting. And this is on the Kessel. If you see -E E-S-E-L, click on it. Um, Kessel guidelines. If you look at they've got it for South East London. It's really useful. It's clinical effectiveness. South East London. <laughs> Very simple. Um, they've got loads of little facts like this. So if you have this, the Kessel guidelines on your desktop, you may not want the clinical stuff, but there's lots of information on there. You've got high blood pressure, you've got CKD, you've got blood, uh, diabetes, you've got CAPD, asthma. It's all there. Really good guidelines you can just dip into. P-E-S-E-L. Clinical effectiveness of South East London. Yeah? It's a very good group. So this like, so if you do physical activity, brisk walking 30, 30 minutes a day, you can reduce your blood pressure by four to nine millimetres of mercury. So that 120 over 80 would come down by four to nine. Make sense? The bottom or the top one and the bottom one. I'm not sure which one at that point will go down. Doesn't say. Consuming diets in rich fruits of the DASH diet, which is a really healthy diet, you can reduce it by eight to 14 millimetres of mercury. That's quite a lot. So that 120 over 80 or the 140 over 90 can come down. Um, salt. How much salt should you have? Oh, I've given it away. <laughs> how much salt should you have in your diet? Six grams. Maggie stock cubes. How much salt do you reckon is in a Maggie stock cube? Six grams. Just in one. So you've got to be asking, you know, you don't have to ask those questions. Let's finish be able to answer those questions. So, you know, salt is massive. Drinking alcohol. Do you get tasked with asking people about alcohol? Yeah. What do you but I would say, I'm not here to judge you. But just can you tell me how much alcohol you're drinking? Because it's really useful. How many units in the bottle of wine? Ten. Ten. Is again a useful thing to have on your desktop. Yeah. So I always read it out in the patient in the clinical room, it's up on the wall. So if you've just got it to read, oh, did you know that you know, I think a low, what is now was used to be the normal, but is now kind of low alcohol, four percent, is two units to a pint. Spirits, one unit to a shot. So you can just make it really cash. If you're just trying to find out, we pick it up as clinicians go through it with you. OK, uh, weight loss. This is a big one. You can order five to 20 with 10 kilograms of weight loss. So if someone's got painful knees, if they lose 10 pounds in weight, they lose 40 pounds of pressure off their knees. So it's really, really powerful stuff. So things that will make you think, oh, OK, maybe it would be good to lose a few pounds. So it's having those hooks. You won't necessarily need to read this whole list off. But if, you, if you've got it in your head and you've got it on screen, you just have something to hear things when you're asking some questions. Um, can I ask a question, though, because obviously the hooks are really important, but how would you frame them for it to be productive? Because I think that you could frame them 
in both a productive way and an unproductive yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested in what people's perspectives are in terms of how you could ensure that you framed one of these pieces of information in a productive way as opposed to scaring someone off <laughs> or kind of alienating them because who the hell knows what a milligram of mercury is I no but this is just really to show no, 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 yeah, but like yeah. how can you turn this into something that would be helpful what what framing do you think would be a productive way of framing i think i would have i think i would say it in you know it depends how well i knew the patient Mm. and how the relationship is going and then if I was trying to maybe come up or suggest ideas let's say they were you know I'd ask them what do you fancy doing do you have any let's say fit in activity for example what do you fancy doing do you have any ideas or do you want me to come up with some suggestions and you come up with some yeah see where we go and I would sort of whack it into the conversation that way and say Mm. because I I heard this fact or you know something like that because I'm stunned by that that I'm 40 pounds of pressure if I just tell that's what it is yeah I'm you couldn't done yeah, that. that's massive so I think you know, you've been able to put yeah. that into a conversation but I think it would really depend on your relationship with that person I think mm-hmm. on the telephone I'm not you know when you've got that resilient patient that wants to the blood pressure you ring up that blood pressure don't you if you had a few facts like about the blood pressure maybe I don't know you could maybe say to them did you realize you know I know we keep I know we keep nagging you often just say Oh, we're mad, aren't we? We're constantly ringing you. And I just, you know, laugh, not laugh, and say, you know, we do ring you. But the reason why is that's another, I mean, you probably do that. But it's just adding a few little facts that hook. I mean, I didn't, blood pressure, just so you know, if you leave blood pressure uncontrolled, it is damaging your heart, it is damaging your brain. If you leave cholesterol uncontrolled, it damages your brain. So it's like these little things, you're not even going to throw that in to frighten them, but it's really important that we control them. They're quite frightening. They are. I'm telling you this <laughs> now. No, 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 no. I'm not asking you to frighten them, but I'm just saying to you, on a positive front, you know, if we control your blood pressure, you can spin it. If we control your pressure, we're reducing massively your risk of heart attack. Yeah. Um, if we control your, because if we leave it, it's just gonna, it's gonna, could, it could cause damage. But if we ignore it, it's, you know, we're, we're putting you at risk. We want to help you. So you, you do frame it in a way that's positive. But it's just having those a few facts and you'll see you pick them. But yes, be right. You can't do not frighten patients and tell them about starting or stroke. Absolutely not. But it's just like we keep chasing you about your blood pressure because I think what I use as a book is um giving an giving an example like one of my patients has stopped taking maintenance maintenance medication, metaphor me, because they've changed your lifestyle. Yeah, they've changed. So there is hope. So yeah. yes, giving them, them hope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, giving them hope. Hearing them, you're like, oh, it is possible. Yeah, and so that's one hook that I use. That's a good hook. Giving them a positive story. So you, some patients like this. Patients are different. Some people work from being scared out of their heads, and some patients <laughs> play and think, I can't cope with this. It may sound. So you've got to judge it. I get to think that when I do the big piece and things like that, a lot of them, especially the older mm-hmm. generation. Yeah. No, I, I, I like to deal with the practice nurse or the GP. They don't want, if you're not clinical, they, they're not, they, it's as much as to say, well, what the hell do you know? I'm only going to try and explain it, but in the end, it's sort of one of those where you think, okay, okay then, that's no problem. And how do you introduce yourself? How do you introduce yourself? Well, you, you just run up saying who you are, who I am, what I do, where I'm calling from, practice, um, and explain benefits of doing the BP at home so that they haven't got to keep coming mm. into the surgery they've got a monitor at home if not we can loan them one and it's just a little text that I'd send them mm. and they just sent me a reading and I was going to no I'd rather do it with someone clinical that's it's, the old generation it's the old generation their hearts break I mean the younger ones I've got a lot of the younger generation they'll take my you, age they'll do it and, yeah. and younger but it's once you get past about 65 67 yeah, you've got a different, very, yeah. yeah, completely different outlook. I mean, do you say, I mean, I'm sure you do, that actually what the reason why we look at home blood pressure is because they're just more active in yeah. surgery and they don't want to have, so think, they just want to come and see the same that, and I say, yeah. you know, it's it's freeing up the GP time for people that, you know, like if you need to get an appointment, you'd be able to get an appointment easier. And, you know, no, it is really hard, isn't it, when you're like sitting there way, they're just setting that, I see the doctor. That. So that list may need to go to the doctor and say, look, I've run these people, I don't want to know, and then you hand it over rather than make sure they let the doctors know about it. Yes, that's the hard list. 
how else can we frame it? I mean, I'll give these, these are more for your interest. Yeah, you can look at Kessel. There's loads of stuff on there, isn't there? But yeah, you've got to frame it, obviously frame it positively. But I would say something like, you know, if we if by going for a walk every day, that can really help with your blood pressure. I mean, for me, it's more, you're not dealing with like the five with most of you. It's mostly, it's more about getting them in. So it's like, it's just, I would say something like, it's just really important um, that we, we keep an eye on your blood pressure because if we, you know, because we, for your sake, and for, if there is anything we can do, we can do it quickly. Because the earlier we react to things, the better. Something like that. I think also about that list, um, you could read it as like a load of scary things about like how much impact different things have on your health. But also all of those things on that list were positive were things you could change. Yeah. Things that you could genuinely change yourself. And if you can phone someone and say, I'm here to help, because what we know is that your needs, we can actually want to meet together. And it's like completely within reach, like obviously not for everyone, but for a significant proportion of the population going for a small walk is something that is on the cards and it's like this will have a really significant impact on your health so if you can frame it to be an empowering thing as opposed to a scary thing obviously as you said it's i would see that list you see i was i saw that list as quite a empowering thing yeah i think i think that list i think it's making it yeah don't bring up and say do you realize that you're I think the key thing is actually just getting into conversations and starting that. Yes, that however, yes, yes. Yes. well, we're going to practice this in a minute. Like, it's only not because we're testing you, because I want to share all your massive experience amongst the group. And it's like if you say, okay, what do you like doing? What makes you feel yes. relaxed? Or what, what's number? Oh, okay, well, that's great. If you do, if you do 30 minutes of exercise every day, then you're going to reduce your. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That kind of stuff. We then lower your blood pressure. Yeah. Oh, no. Did you know? Did you know? <laughs> Did you know that you're about to drop dead tomorrow? No, no. Absolutely not. Um, so we understand. So again, I'm going to explain to you what. Who knows what the ACR is? Has any doctors here done something? Anyone? What is it? Uh, is it a protein? Yeah, it is. Why is it important? Because it shows how it's not just yes, it is. There is a brilliant CKD page on Kessel. So have a look at it. And there's some really simple stuff on there. So yeah, if it shows it's the it's the I'm doing a talk on this tomorrow for nurses. So um it is it's the A part of the CKD. You know when you see CKD. You can see in CK, hang on, GA3, G3A1. You've seen that? It's the A part, okay? So when you're doing that urine test, and we've got to think between us how we're going to frame this, I'm just telling you what it is. When you're doing the urine test, we're looking at how much protein is leaking, which gives us a clue, part of a clue as to how the kidneys work, yeah, and whether there's an issue. Um, actually, chronic kidney disease is, hang on, just... And it says it causes more, it, it kills people more than breast cancer. And it gives you, and actually chronic kidney disease gives you more at risk of a heart attack, heart issues than it does renal failure. So, turn off that. Yeah. So, she's like, say, okay, she said, oh, why can't I just take the blood test for it? You know, you have to have two. So, I did. Yes. Yeah, so, so, it's the A part of the, yeah. It's, it helps us coach this, it helps us work out, it gives us the full picture by doing the blood test, which is the EGFR. And the urine test, which is the ACR. Okay. Now they idiotically, and I don't know when it was, five years ago, maybe anyone remember, they took it out of the cough box. Why did they take it out of the cough box? Because they took it out of the cough box, it, people forgot to ask for it. So then we've now got so much under undiagnosed CPD, and people yeah. don't know what to do with it either. Yeah. But your message to the patients is we we have to screen them. The patients you would be asking for, it's on the cough box, anyway, just so you know, it's people with high blood pressure, specifically if it's uncontrolled. If they've got high blood pressure, it should be every five years if it's controlled. Diabetics, um, people who've had acute kidney injury, if anyone see the AKI in the notes. Um, diabetics, hypertension, I'm sure I've forgotten a few here, we'll have a look. But yeah, it's a certain group of people, obviously anyone who's got CKD. <laughs> You've got to keep an eye on them, okay? Um, so if it's so if they've got persistently high uh, protein in their urine, it's usually if you do it once, you usually do a fasting one just to confirm. Um, and if EGR if is out, so just so you know, is if it's below sixty, it's yeah, if it's above sixty, but the main cutoff is sixty. Um, you'd repeat it and just make sure you know. So you'd always double check things, but that's what we're doing. So if the ACR is there, we're doing it to check their kidney health. The earlier we kept 
but the earlier we catch any issues with their kidneys, the better. Yeah. So it's not like so they're going to fail and die of kidney disease. Actually, if we get in there now and work out what's going on with their kidney health, we can see they're not working well, we can support them better with medication, diet, and lifestyle changes. Sorry. Talking about long term conditions, um, mm -hmm. a patient probably has been asked to come pick up some blood tests to do some and blood forms to do yeah. some blood tests. And the patient just randomly chose that front desk. What am I supposed to pass for the blood test? How do you know what to tell them in that situation? So, what do you, where are they supposed to pass for the blood, blood test? Blood okay. Test so, ideally now, and anyone who can correct me, they did take out the fasting cholesterol unless you specifically need it. So, the only one you need to fast for in the blood is the triglycerides. And that's because of diabetes. If that's high, that's a massive thing. But mainly now, we don't, we're not so strict unless we're repeating something. Um, ideally, ACR should be the first fasting sample, the urine test. But it, I now, they just want to get one. So they get it in surgery. And if it's out, they'll get a fasting one. Okay, so if they're there and they need a wee, get into the toilet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I would also risk, not risk sending away. If I've got blood tests that are there and there's something in the appointment, get them in. We can always get in the back and repeat if we have to repeat any of them, ideally. If you think they're not going to come back, just get them in. But the only one that has to absolutely usually be fasting if it's cholesterol, we try this to rise. All right. Um, what am I reading here? Sorry. Yeah, Mercury Al I never say it. I think I've missed something. Yeah, I'm, I'm on, I missed something. Mercury Al helps if, if, if identify kidney disease, I've just said. So as I say, that's the A part. And if it's low, below 0 0.3 or low, low 3, then it's usually full. Yeah, you'll see it as the red line. You don't have to do this bit, but it's just telling you so you know. Um, it's important because it's um, two of the most vital organs in our body. Their, their health is closely linked with the heart and the kidneys, okay? So kidney disease links with the heart. So just so you, that's why we're banging on about ACRs, 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 upstate renal function. Really, really important. Um, and if you see someone hasn't had blood for a year, I don't know if you're allowed to do a form. Are you? Don't know. If I see someone has had blood for a year, I will make sure they're done. If they're in that category. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the patients at risk. So ethnicity, um, if they've got incidental blood in their urine from dipping or protein in their urine, um, if they've got structural damage to their kidneys, family history of end say kidney disease, gout, smoking, obesity. Okay, um, episodes of acute kidney injury, um, if they've got multi-system issues and med certain medications like non-steroidal urofen, it's, it's a risk Okay, So not that you need to remember that, but it's just worth knowing. And they would need a kidney check, which would involve ACR, renal function, um, mainly, and, um, and then we go on those results. So that's why now, people are probably, we need to start coding people, not to be not to tick a box but actually it is ticking a box but actually means that we can start giving them the correct treatment and there's some really good treatments out there for, for this um have you heard of the drug sglt2 have you heard that one daphoflogosin emphoflogosin canaflogosin all gosins the gosins <laughs> if you see them on the list these are the wonder drug that were developed i think when i left the diabetes in 2012 it was just out it was the new kid on the block just about coming out it is now being stolen by the cardiologists and the kidney doctors as well as the diabetes doctors it is the wonder drug it protects the heart protects the kidneys it helps you wee out sugar so it brings your weight down it works completely different to all the other tablets but it can this downside um but it helps your blood pressure as well so it's a brilliant drug and we're all now putting everyone on it so if I see my nice guidelines and I've seen any of, and I see there's whatever reasons, I will put them on it if I can. They've got, I see their renal function drop to condition. You don't have to know that, I'm just saying. But just that's why we're banging on about, you know, if they've got high blood pressure, you need to make sure they've got an up-to-date urine test and an up-to-date blood. So, you were, well, some of you might be dipping urine, but if you dip in it and you find incidental blood there, plus one, you need to be thinking, hang on, is there an infection? Um, but we need to send it off. We definitely need to send an ACR off. Um, so, so kidney 
the patient says a long-term condition that affects this is CKD. So they might ask you, because they forget people with now can see their notes, right? Mm. Do you ever get asked, what's, yeah. like, why have I got this kidney issue yeah. on my notes? Yeah. yeah. So it's a long-term condition. It's silent. It doesn't cause any symptoms until it reaches the advanced stage. So it's probably quite mild at that point. Um, we need to catch it early through those two tests, so through a urine test and a blood test. And then we can work out where you fit and we can work out the proper treatment for it. I know you will get you tired, I'm really sorry. We'll do some group work in a minute. So these are the people we screen, diabetics, people who are on long-term lithium, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such as aspirin, neurofen, they're in that family. Um, people with heart failure, um, stage five CKD is renal failure. They're usually on a different um, renal diet at that point, yeah. Um, and it can affect everywhere. As I said, the heart is a big one. Um, so, so I feel perfectly fine. I don't want to come in. Why? My kidneys are fine. Just like having high blood pressure, I feel fine. So they've noticed your kidneys aren't working as well. This is just something you could say. They should. Um, there are many things we can do to help this. Would you mind if I booked you in for some bloods and a physical check first? This is just another way, and we're going to have some group work in a minute to see if we can think of other ways. Once the results are back, we'll ensure you see a senior clinician to review everything and make a plan so we can support you to be as healthy as possible. This will include explaining more detail because you can't do that um, and uh, in detail your results, including your kidney. Just an idea, just a few words you could say. Um, okay, I'm gonna just quickly whisk through other things and then we're gonna have a sort of group work. So. What if their mood is low and is this a block of the concern? Now, I would say there's something called the PHQ-4. Anyone found that on emits? Yeah. PHQ-4 is really quick. That's what it looks like. Now, I'm not saying you have to diagnose depression. I'm not saying you have to be the condition, but I'm saying if you pick up something and it's a blocker, it's the right reason why they're not coming in. You could say, do you, if they will, because you're not a condition, of course, it might, but they might, you never know. You can ask these questions on the phone if you feel you can. Um, and you can then see what the score is. And if it scores high, you can then book them in with a GP. You know, if you feel they're saying to you, I want to kill myself, obviously the emergency doctor that day then. But you can discuss and book a book with GP, give information, encourage them. It just might help them. You're listening. It's a bit like saying, oh, I'll book you with a social prescriber because I can hear that you're saying that you really <coughs> your benefits. Let me put you something can support you back alongside this. So if you feel their mood is a blocker, it just might be nice for them to book you that she's done something about that for them and you put them in with the mental health nurse, actually, if you've got one in practice. Um, but if you're really worried and any red flags, obviously do not, do not ignore. Um, yeah, so that's it. So listen to your patient. Don't write off their agenda, which we've talked about. Troubleshoot and signpost as much as possible. If you can't solve it, pass it on to the clinician that you can. And if that's not possible, that needs to be highlighted. If you don't feel you've got anywhere to go with things, you need to have that discussion, especially with this project, because this is the chance to change practice. The people who on this pilot project, um, that they, we want to hear what's, how we can make things different. It's they feel heard, this is their health, as they let them say their piece and um, seek if not able to solve. That was another break, but the break will be, Lauren, have you got the, yeah. So we're just gonna get you into groups and this is just really not so much to test you. It's actually about, we've got so much knowledge in this room, so much knowledge in this room. We're gonna give you some scenarios. Um, if, you, if you want the social prescribers in one, yeah, it's up to you. Can I have a mix it up? We've got six, haven't we? Yeah. We've got six, six kind of types of patients, types of things you can come across. Please just see what you can come up with, how you would resolve it, because then somebody might go, oh, that's a good idea. I'll take that away. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of knowledge in this room, so let's just share it. Um, this is one. So shall we do group one, two, three, four, five, six? You've only got three. Would anyone want to come and join us? Um, so, so number one, language. So you've got language barrier issue. See what you can come up with. Number two, they're not interested in coming in because they've got care and responsibilities. They don't have time. Number three, so I say three there. Yeah. An yeah. angry patient with GP yeah. practice hates the surgery. Oh, let them down all the time. <laughs> oh, hang on, it's gone. Just number four, it. learning disabilities. I think. Number five, they're homeless. They've got issues. Their money's gone. They don't know what they're doing. Oh. And number six, they're yeah. depressed. 
Can anyone come and join this table, please? Can I still have to do this in the last? But we're going to come out of the house, we're going to leave. We're going to give you... Yes,
goes on this is this is gold dust in my view so number one let's have your gold dust um so we talked a lot about and that there's lots of different things that we can use and lots of different tools at our disposal but that we all need to be aware that the tools have those limitations mm -hmm. um, and depending on the situation may not be available so for example on the front desk i didn't realize sometimes the language um uh, line language line is not available to the staff on the front desk which right. I would say was probably bonkers. very, you know, very essential for them to have that. And um, we also talked about, let's say, people with hearing issues as yeah. opposed to, you know, maybe not. And also um, language issues. And so I, I mentioned a, a, an example whereby I was speaking English and so was the patient. But because of our accents, we didn't yeah. understand each other. And so we're, but we're both speaking the same language. Yeah. So and, you know, that's yeah. an issue as well. And also yeah. that there are limitations as well to the um, language line. So, for example, Marianne, had, whereby um, someone had actually uh, wanted, the, the translator wanted to know what the topic was. Um, because, and it was sort of housing and mental health. And they refused to do it because they didn't want to be involved in that mental health. So... That's I didn't know that was possible. No, was that, that that was on translate. That was not on. Yeah. So you but is that worth reporting? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> At least asking customer service is that a thing? I think you know if they can run your books to, to you. To do, I do think surely they're just the translator. Yeah. 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 And they shouldn't. They're not having to get involved. Yeah. yeah. And also, I think I mentioned to Emma a scenario whereby a few months later the patient came back and actually said that. She thinks that it was probably to do with something that was in the notes that uh, the patient actually told her that 
what the translator said she said was not what she said. Mm. So oh now you've incorrect that translation. Wow, that is worth reporting. So that is worth reporting. That is worth reporting. Worth reporting. So we're talking about, you know, there are limitations. And also we talked about Google Translate and, um, but, you know, in, what was it, invention? There was a lady came up and it said... Basically, basically, she came to, she found out she's pregnant. Yeah. But on Google Translate, what she had written, switched to, I want the doctor to tell me why I'm pregnant. Sometimes they may be like some mission to they have really but they have the education. Absolutely. And also if you're using a relative, it's very you've got to be very careful to use relatives to yeah. Because if that person doesn't want that person to know something, they may also change it. It is a really tricky one. Language is hard. Yeah. And if we can anyone got any any ideas or solutions that we could think of? Anything to share that you think actually wouldn't it be good if blue sky? I think can be off the wall. We don't care. Um, obviously, it'd be great to have every language in the building, but that's not possible. Um, I I think maybe I think that if you have got somebody who speaks that language, I'd say have a list. But maybe um, those the list of patients who don't speak it, which is probably quite a few actually, but maybe have a, spe a back room you can go and phone them from. Obviously, not on the desk. So if you know that you're going to have somebody who can't speak English, you can actually go into a room. Not have reception listening because I'm doing doing language on the desk. That would be very hard. Yeah, it would be very very hard. Anything else you want to share on that list? Anyone else got any comments? All good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Number two. Just have all it is. Go. <laughs> I've got care responsibility. Don't have time. That's it. We've got care responsibility and we've got time. It's that patient. Okay. Um, do you know, we, we kind of got sidetracked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what did you get sidetracked? As long as it wasn't about uh, television. It was, no, it was about sort of CKD and uh, we, we do like group consultations and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's about how we were getting people to like, come in and help us. But, it, but we did start with it. So, <laughs> so tell us to start <laughs> so, where you got sidetracked. Uh, in terms of uh, patients not having time Kind of having flexibility around giving them options, yeah. whether that's having evening clinics or whether that's uh, maybe perhaps opening up their diaries where you can send them a link and they can book in yeah. themselves at a time that's convenient for them. Um, that QRX allow that now, do you know? Yeah, yeah. it's really good. So I was using it all the time yesterday. Like, Look, um, this is clinic. For us, the social prescribing service, we, we haven't opened up our uh, appointment books to like the, to the masses so we tend to just offer them options so, yeah because our service is monday to friday night to five so right. if you're also working money yeah there isn't actually an alternative um so that needs to be raised doesn't it we need to look into how we can maybe that's a point yeah we need to yeah, yeah yeah because if, if especially if there's an expectation that social prescribing or camp might be is the same as the rest of the world PCNs. Yeah. Then it should be the same or green pilling, like if it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if it's not like it's yeah. PCN like, conditions. So and yeah, also so. somebody said somebody said to me, is it a reason I haven't got time to talk to you? So you haven't got time to go through a whole questionnaire and you get asked to do questionnaires. So what would you say with that? Because sometimes it I mean I, I might suggest can I call you that next week if we make it time to call you. Um because often they're, they're in a rush to taking the job. Now, sometimes it's very great that you've offered them that alternative as well. But, um, okay, anything from your CKD talk that's relevant or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess, I guess, because it's part of the, um, part of what we're talking about today, we're doing um, some of this group consultations. Yeah. Inviting patient cohorts um, that meet certain criteria. Yeah. For the kidney disease and then yeah. kind of offering them new medication yeah um so it's done social prescribers is going to facilitate it uh pharmacists or senior pharmacists uh give clinical side things um and everybody's offered uh, a social prescribing referral um for like healthy lifestyle diet those kinds of things and obviously other factors um so they're offered a social prescribing referral most of the, the medical part of things um <laughs> Tests, urine tests, we already have the form printed out. We don't know if they're going to say yes or no. If they say, okay. Okay. They say yes, then we give it to the front down. Then the presentation um, with the date of like when they should do it by back. Uh, the pharmacist will set up follow up appointments. Um, Excellent. 
it's quite it's been quite effective. So we're going to be doing it. Sounds good. Spreading type diabetes. Um, yeah, so. Anyone else done for consultations? Sorry, which piece do you have in the new one? Uh, North Southern. North Southern. Yeah. yeah. So, anyone else? Uh, I think we made the um, invites and the admin sites. Um, uh, Same team. So yeah. 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 Is, is, there is group of consultation training available in South East London. I'm just in the end, so just between Perfect. Perfect. It's good. It's powerful. Group consultations are going to be good, I think. Yes. So, yeah, it's coming. So, I think if anyone's not got it, there is training. Um, South East London did fund some training for group consultations. It's the next week. But we've got some first subscribers one. There wasn't one when we did the other training. Three sessions of training. Yeah, they've got a special one with you sort of for Christmas. So we need to wait till next week to so the next one. Only to schedule <laughs> so There's a social prescribers group consultation oh, next week. Is it on the ELC? ELC yeah. yeah, I mean, they're very, it's good training. I've just done it and it is, um, yeah. you know, it's not like my training, but, but it, it was actually very engaging. And it, it's, you have to do four <laughs> orientation basics and whatever specialty you are and in the simulation. So it's worth thinking about. It's a good way to get patients in as a group as well. So it's, it's quite, quite good. So thank you for sharing that. Um, what was the next one? Number three. Go on, oh. you, you had some good ideas. And repatient. That's most of it. <laughs> it is most. Do you want the microphone? You're right. Can you, can you bellow? I'll try. Go on, bellow. I have a microphone if you want uh, to. No, no, it's fine. Um, <laughs> We we said it it really comes down to kind of listening. It's it, it, it depends why they're angry, really. Um they might be angry because they've been told that I can help with something that isn't it's something social prescribing can do. Um it might be that they're angry because the surgery never responded to them when they sent them something. It might be because they've been struggling to get an appointment for the last couple of months. And the next thing they hear is they call it. It might be because uh, you know. One thing, it might be because of a bunch of things. <laughs> I have sent patients the link to find a GP if they want to change GP factors. Um, you know, it's, it's really responding to what they say. What they say, yeah. Step one is listening. And that, yeah, absolutely. And that de escalates 90%. Yeah. That two and a half minute rants. Yeah. Has anyone got an example of how they managed to de escalate over 90%? I'm sure you've all got one. Go on. Have you got one? No? Go on. I'm sorry. I say agree, kind of agree with like the okay. problem they ran with the Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a problem. It is harder when they're shouting at you. <laughs> yeah. I had a patient. I was I was late, as you do. She came march for that. She went, Oh my god, I've been waiting 45 minutes to see you. And I was like, okay. And she was like, attack, attack, attack. And I just my natural response, I hate people sharing with me. But anyway, eventually I just let her rant. And then eventually we got, you know, I said, Well, I'm here to help you. I'm really sorry, it's because I've been giving other patients my time, but I'll give you the same amount of time if we need it. And eventually we became best friends. Not but, you know, <laughs> the only one I've seen it. But it is really hard when they first go at you, isn't it? It's it's uh because we're not used to it. We don't naturally shout at people do we but for some reason patients think they can shout at us. so you know i think as i say i blame the daily mail i blame the press a lot i think you know when i was in around when i first started practicing in 96 it's when the mmr thing came up and i blame gmtv and the daily mail for making that massive and obviously the lots but you know it was it, they just it just feeds the public and they get all this information it's the same at the moment they turned on gp land and suddenly we are the baddies and of course it's hard to get through because we can't you know we haven't got the capacity you know etc etc so it, it is really hard but yeah it is listening as much as you're kind of going oh my tongue here but let them run because once they've vomited that out they they something they're more ready to listen to you but if you count if you counteract them that red personality versus red personality that's not going to work you're just going to end up fighting which I've seen in practice. Somebody literally screaming, reception screaming at the patient. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. you know, I've seen one of my nurses texting me said that the patient had literally broken our waiting 
you know, they, they're so angry and there's so much anger. I mean, who's noticed that dra drivers are really angry these days? Oh my gosh, there's no patience for anyone. You're, you're waiting that extra two seconds to turn right and you've got someone beeping you behind. Everyone's very impatient. I think that comes into our world as well massively. So, okay, so angry patient. Anyone, any other thoughts? Anyone else in the room? Any thoughts on angry patients? Any tips? Sometimes, no matter what you explain to them, it doesn't go through. Yeah. So, just call them another day. Like yeah, you absolutely. Can I call you back? I know I can hear you're really angry. Okay, summarize that. I can hear you're really frustrated with us today. Would it be okay to call you back next week and be a better class? Something like that. Because they're probably fed up with the 15,000 smear reforms they've had. Yeah. And, and at the moment, oh my God, all the patients have been called for diabetic blood pressure checks and they've all had them. And they've come in, you're like, why? And I have to make find something else they're coming for. But it is, it is really difficult. Sorry, just one um, good example is uh, the group consultations. Um, I think one of the ladies mentions uh, that um, a lot of, there's quite a few patients that don't know they have CKD. Yeah. So, um, Although I call the patient and send out um, a bit of information about CKB to them and they, they happy to come along, they still come along to the group consultation and say that they have they, they have no idea that they have CAD mm -hmm. and and they're very we work for the PCN, so we um, go to practices and, and say that we're offering this uh, yeah. service. Um we, we have the patients come in they're very very angry at the, their GP yeah. so sometimes the first 10 to 15 minutes is literally just letting them then because we need to let them get that out so that we can then otherwise they're not really going to pay attention because they're all of these they're so angry you've got to clear the heads it's like empty yeah and some, head off and empty the anger out. some of that is um they will not be having to wait a long time for yeah. GPs which is completely separate but still just just let them yeah. It out. And, and then I'm, they leave the, the group consultation happy. very happy that yeah. they've now got this education course that's, they that's educated. It, yeah. yeah, they go completely in, but yeah. they didn't know they had it at the beginning of the session. We usually give a uh, two hour time for the whole session. Yeah, and they go out. Oh, that's so happy that they came in. Yeah, and this is that understanding experience. It is true. Knowledge is power. And just to reassure you, in two weeks' time, we will be going through CKD with the doctors. And can't do because that's what does happen. People don't understand what it is, so they go, Oh, did someone else will do that one, and it gets left. So that's not going to happen anymore. We're going to try not to see it. Someone else will find that. I think the major um, solution to the patient being angry is information, having information, knowledge is power. Many yeah. times, when a patient will be ang angry, is because they're trying to get something they cannot get. Yes, maybe they're trying to get an appointment or there's something going wrong. But when you have the information, and you're able to offer them other services. For instance, maybe there's no service within the GP. There's the new pharmacy first thing. You yeah. can try and offer them yeah. pharmacy first. If, but if you do yourself don't have that information, there's no way you're going to settle that anger, which means you're just going to be at cluster that, heads and yeah. attacking past with each other. But when we have more information, we're able to offer the patients more services and we're also able to offer more advice, yeah. then we'll be able to help. For instance, if a patient can get to text messages for blood pressure, Say, well, you need to give blood pressure. And the patient calls you and is angry and saying, you've been sending me this text. Why do I need to give my blood pressure? If you don't know the reason why the patient needs to give the yes. blood pressure. You're just going to exactly. Death. So would another session, obviously today it's been all about which is what the GPs are getting. Um, would another ses session, a bit more clinical, be useful to you? A bit more if I want you to be clinicians at the end of all this. Yes, you want to be. Put you on the right course. But would you like a deeper session on blood pressure, diabetes, basic? Yes. Would that yeah, be useful? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. So you're you're absolutely right, though. It is about diffusing the issue, isn't it? So definitely. Okay. Number four. Learning disability. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, um. In regards to learning disability, um, what we found is a lot of the patients which have learning disabilities, they initially they just this when it comes to a telephone, it's mainly they they find it a bit difficult. So they've said that you know like for them to be invited in and have the learning disability review mm -hmm. with a you know like with a um, either a HCA or whatever, yeah. and then um, there's different tools that we can use, like um, the Makaton, 
um, that's that's very popular. I love that one with them. Um, also, um, you know, like discussing with them a holistic approach as well, um, and maybe focusing on them because a lot of people, when they come to appointments, um, people with learning disabilities, people always focus on the carer and talk to the carer yes, instead of yes, them. Yes, yeah, um, absolutely. They found that they like you discussing it with yeah. them directly. Um, also, um, you know, like breaking down the, you know, like the jargon in regards to, you know, like doctors would use medical terms yeah. and so forth. Language apps and language matches very important yeah. yeah. as well. Yeah. And um, also, you know, like they find it, you know, I've, I've noticed that they're very anxious, so they'd be looking around, looking, you know, like very anxious at their appointment, um, it could be a new surround there, or anything, looking around. So that way, you know, try and engage them, engage with them as easy as possible. Yeah. Something that would help them, I would say. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Them feel comfortable as well. Absolutely. Well done. Anyone else got anything else to add to that? On the telephone, it's probably about making sure that maybe a loudspeaker, you've yes. got two people, yeah. them and their care in the room. And making sure that they hear and they they feel heard, and maybe the same. Maybe there's a care coordinator that literally deals with them because they they get mm -hmm. to know your name, so they know it's you ringing up. They love familiarity, so it's it's nice to have that. And she say, don't talk down to them. I think having resources is important, like breakdown of web, you know, where they have meaningful. Absolutely, you've got something to support the Yeah, yeah, and it sounds like we need to definitely be offering you. We're, it, you think it, it's standing in now, it's so obvious, isn't it, that actually we need to upskill you. What the hell are you asking them to come in for? Because yeah. actually, what is, you know, how are you supposed to do right? It's a blocker. And then they go, oh, you're not a clinician. But actually, if you could say, well, actually, I do understand that blah, 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 blood pressure. They go, oh, okay, actually, you do that. You know, so we need to probably give you those, those tools in your box. Um, I have things on the desktop, definitely. Um, Things, resources like, for instance, the physio first or anything you can refer, just have them to hand because yes. if you've got those and say that's a really good tool you've got to be using as well. Yeah, I also find because I've got a specific person <coughs> with a learning disability, uh, and I think it's really important that you work with other agencies so where they're also on their books, for instance, this person's also on Bromley Well. Yeah. And we've made that connection now because sometimes they'll go into Bromley Well because he's forgotten something. Yeah. Or he doesn't know when his appointment is with me. So then that person from Bromley Well will bring me and say, oh, surely, you know, so so yeah. he's got an appointment. Or I'll bring her and say, you know, he's been in. Can you just check with them to make sure he remembers his appointment with you? So it's almost like you've got to connect the dots with everybody yeah, just, with yeah. the learning disabilities. And we've only just made that connection. And I've been seeing this person because there was no record of them going to Bromley Well. Um, so we've made that connection now after I've been seeing him for about four or five months. So it's taken that whole time for me to know that he's also with Bromley Wow. But now we do know that it's absolutely amazing. It can change so much. We're doing a home visit together and all of that. So it has made a but massive yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's, that's good. Did anyone else do that? To make sure we just connect to as much outside resources as we can if they've got. Find out what who else they're being seen by. It can be very useful. Excellent. What are you? Oh, I don't know. What are you? Did you talk about something different? It was so weird, you. We've been things now. The tension. 20 lines. What we're doing. Go on then. Go on then. What did you talk about? <laughs> <laughs> we have best. Confess. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
fill in and get into the registers of things. They look at the white pitch, they look at the benefits and mental health. And there's, the, there's a nurse um, that's based there. So it, it's looking at all, all the, the other whole picture, the whole it. picture, which is brilliant. It's really important. So we should all know, you should all know your homeless connection, you know, your boroughs, it is really important. And you know that you don't, if somebody is homeless, they do not, no one, you don't have to provide all that information that the exception is asking for. You don't have to. If you're homeless, you are entitled to register the GP. You don't need all that stuff. And it's just that me, it's just mm. engraved in yeah. surgeries. It's not true. You it's, don't, you don't need it. It's also how long wait lists are as well. Like, you know, when you sign for something. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, it's six weeks before I actually, or well, six months before I actually even called you. Mm. Yeah, because I get that. And knowing how long they might have to wait for it. Or they, yeah, absolutely. So it's just knowing your local area, isn't it? I think it's a message here, is knowing what's local. As you said, if you've got the tools in your box, you could diffuse the situation very quickly. Last but not least, did you, did you, where are we? What was the last one? I just add on the, on the knowing your local area point, like in terms of the purpose of this project, it's really about it being a multidisciplinary approach. So we're hoping that the teams will evolve to become yeah. more and more multidisciplinary. So obviously like our clinical leads, whatever, are going to have one perspective on what are the organisations that exist in your kind of PCN borough that can be involved in this project, but also everyone in this room will have a very different and equally valuable perspective on who are the other organisations. And so everyone is expecting this to be a project that evolves. We haven't kind of made it and it's done. So on that kind of premise, if you think that there are gaps and kind of obvious organisations that should be in the room or we should be signposting to, like, please feel um, kind of empowered to bring those organisations in as well, because your perspectives are different to those that we've had already. So you might know about different organisations. Yeah. So I think please know that that's completely like, I don't know, potentially projects you've worked in in the past. This is how it works. So let's all do it at the end. But the, the nature of this project is not like that. And those involved are not expecting the current product to be the end result. It's something that's going to evolve. So just please know that as, as things it's like so, well, you know if you're putting you know, the ingredients in the pot we haven't even cooked it yet so we just need to be yeah. adding adding everything so even if we send a survey out at the end we might just do a free tip so if you've got any blue sky thinking even i love blue sky thinking because that's where the ideas come from we can sometimes make them work so you know just let us know what you think any nuggets have been made and accepted um last ones who's speaking Go on, be brave. <laughs> so I said ours was mental health. Yeah. Um, mental health is obviously massive, massive. Um, obviously, we've got your usual your signposts like that. I have got um spare and you know, but then also yeah. also have, um our site and to PCM practice is getting different. But like we've got access to a mental health practitioner who's like in, in between four and can get too scared to go to yeah to spa. have you all got those everyone you should have one uh, on your pcn yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah so <laughs> but then obviously oh, we came across the information <laughs> so when so so we play some here yeah 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 and then we it was interesting the fact that they they actually don't take this to help they actually redirect them to one on one um so like obviously it's like that's 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 so we'd like to think our care has been taken over by yeah you know, um, yeah. so obviously I learned something new today so obviously that's something like we go back and that like, obviously I don't know how we did that anything else um, you know but it's I don't know you need to slag this the thing is I think this group you know as, as, often don't feel they've got a voice in general practice and I think I'd like to find your voice and mm. say it because what you've got to say is so important. You know, we're all on the train together. I don't know if it feels like GPs are in a different carriage, but we're all on the same carriage, okay? So we need to say your voice is as valuable as my voice, your ideas are as valuable as my ideas. Um, you know, so please find your voice and share it. So even if it's like with Lauren and she we can share it. Why? She doesn't have to go, we can get it, we can get it sent through. And I believe me, I will be filtering a lot of these G groups and clinicians that be too much time. So yeah, so I think you do need to flag it. Why would they have no mental health coverage? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought yeah, I thought that'd be very important. That's every patient. Yeah, yeah, and massively important. Yeah.
Anyone else got any mental health ideas? Um, sometimes it isn't actually presents as mental health, but it might be so. Got we use it. Yeah, it's sort of something different. Uh, it's so it's kind of digging about, you know, trying to feed down to what could be. Yeah, dig down. They don't always know, you know, sometimes <laughs> they're not aware, but sometimes no. they are aware and they know what's affecting them. Yes. And then that's when I would say, a referral to the social prescriber. They've got more time for digging. Yeah. yeah. It needs the handle on the door moment, but it's on the end of the telephone call. <laughs> you know, I've done ask the consultation and I'm finished. They get to the door and they say, well, actually, it's time. They've done everything else but that, and then suddenly, and it's probably the same. Sometimes it takes patients the confidence that to be, have that rapport with you to go and say, actually, can I just admit to you, I can't be right. So far, it's not just telling you when they get to know you, they do. So, yeah, it's easy to talk about that. Um, has anyone else got anything to share? You wanted to say something. Sorry, yeah, Lawrence. Just to flag, this will come, I don't know if it will come your way, which is why I'm going to flag it, which is that with IAT, they have, each borough has a specific long-term conditions IAT person. And oh. from what I gather, the waiting lists there are shorter, are shorter yeah. than the like general waiting they are. list. So one of the clinical leads for this project is reaching out to all of those long-term conditions I at people. When that's done, whatever, we're going to be sharing it. But I just want to make sure that that information yeah, has made it way, its way to you because also you can kind of pester from a different angle to work out who those people yeah. are. And then that also in terms of under, having that understanding that in this project, the people that we're interacting with will have multiple long-term conditions, so are entitled to that specific kind of route through IAPT as well, I think is really useful to know. So what is it called? So it's really yeah, useful yeah. for this particular project or? or um, well, Nandi's reaching out to those people at the moment, and then we're going to be able to directly put them in touch with you. Is the plan. So each model will have... Yeah, they, they've already got, they but they just... Have, they, you just, they, you just I don't, don't know, but I think a lot of people don't seem to. Know. So with uh, my yeah, services, so they now yeah, most of our patients with my <laughs> surgeries I work at self refer. Uh, yeah. And so if they're having, if they've got a MLTC diagnosis, <laughs> say when you're self referring, but ask for the specialist MLTC therapist department unit service. I'll ask because we'll I'll find out for you. I'll ask and include it in the like. The path that we send across to you. I'll put okay. it in the Sorry, when you made the comment that there is these the specialist people, yeah, people, which is great. Is it a service or is it just a particular clinician? My understanding is that there's a clinician who has got that title in each borough. Okay. Yes, so you've got, got one per borough. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was going to say, so on the part of the patients are supporting, they're already accessing the long term uh, health conditions like therapy. It tends to be group therapy, which right. turns a lot of people off. Yeah. Uh, for other people, it's great, but I tend to encourage them to go with it. It's, when, you, when you're sitting in a group with like five, ten other people who've got the same issue as you, um, there's kind of um, comfort in that you're not alone. Absolutely. Um, so it's kind of encouraging it, but also the actual form for I is very, very basic. It doesn't yeah. ask people. No. So unless you're person to triage in, Digs or like asks the patient, or is the patient the patient not clued up? It's like I thought all these things, and it's just you know, it doesn't get picked up. No. So they're just asking how they're feeling, and not necessarily the what's bothering. And it, they don't know either. Simple as that. You say they don't actually know what's no. bothering them. They just know they feel rubbish, and actually, it could be a combination of lots of factors. With diabetes out of control, they're exhausted. They haven't got um, you know, that they're worried about their money. They can't work as hard because they, they you know. I don't know if you can't it all interlinks and it's just and I suppose the message to you and will be to the clinicians is just it's just remembering that and it's really hard it's not saying you don't but it's just with the way the workload is and how hard and pressured it is it's just sometimes it's 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 easy to kind of forget just because you're so busy um, and I know the Irish just I'm thinking about the signposting to IAPS marks and all that I know the Irish Heart Foundation I assume the British Heart Foundation is the same have a particular section where they do counselling for people with chronic kidney disease, how it affects their heart. So these are the kind of things that we need to do some research on and get them on your desk. So you've got your toolbox of, I can talk about this, I can talk about that, you know, blah, 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 blah. So um, let's, so anything you want to share that you've got in your nuggets of 
all your, you know, in your boroughs, it'd be good to share them so we can all, because if it's in your borough, it's probably in another borough, but we just have to have it, yeah. Um, for instance, I think in Lewisham, there's Sydenham Gardens. Yeah, so you can go and they go and do some gardening for mental yeah. health. So has anyone got anything equivalent in another borough? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just knowing all of those things. And there's a food bank in Pinch. There's a food bank that has a councillor for the food bank. Yes. There's a councillor. So they have a councillor, they pay a councillor. Wow. Well, I've heard of food banks who don't need to jump in the hoops and get a voucher and referral. That's so one of the things I always ask is someone about the health issues. So how are you going to find food? I think I can get them into the food bank. I know there's more support there. But it's only accessible for the food bank, yes. Brilliant. So it's like it's, it's knowing about all of It's knowing what and where you can go. The other thing is, and Lauren's mentioned this, and I think I'm going to, is can we get you at least one or two of you into the multidisciplinary meetings? You should be at the table. So a representative from this should be at the table from you because you are taking those calls. You're hearing it firsthand. So there are MDT meetings every usually, I don't know, some every borough is doing it differently. So find out what your borough is doing and join in. Come in, say, you know, um, I want to, can I be part of it? It's not just because you're it's not clinical because you can't be, because you you're bringing other perspective and you might have picked something up. Yeah. And again, I do think we should think about having specific sessions so we can troubleshoot ones that we really are stuck on trying to get them in. Um, but yeah, so I think find out who your project leaders are. Greenwich, I think it's just two of you here today, but you're doing, you're, Lauren was saying you've started and offering your way and doing what? Involved you're involved in it all up, yeah. so you know all about the projects. Yeah. For those of you who don't, find out who sent you here. <laughs> and ask them, why did you send to me here today? What's the project? I want to understand more. I know the basics now, but what's what's the next steps? Because we wanted, didn't we, everyone to come to the or more people to come to the workshops. So find out where what steps because it's 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 you like not to find out by asking me if you don't know who who or what has go. brought you here. Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> 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 and, 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 we're not going to keep up until yeah. the end. Yeah. We're not going to carry on much longer because I think they're tired. Yeah. See, I see what I don't because I'm checking. We're getting a bit tired, so we're going to finish soon. I promise. Um, so, has anyone got anything else they want to talk about, or any questions, or anything I've missed off? Yeah. How are you all feeling? Hopefully inspired. To go back and just, you know, grab those managers to kind of include you and um, support you. So, I've got my name. Yeah, it's just here. Thanks. So, I was just going to briefly, and I, I won't go through all so that we've touched on it. Motivational interviewing. Um, so, this is, we've talked about this. So I'm going to literally go through it. It's about picking up and um, going with. You know, initiating change, which we've just talked about quite a lot. You, you know, you're doing this. You do it without thinking about it. It's just putting it into some sort of um, structure. So it's basically designed to strengthen the personal motivation and commitment for a specific goal. So for you, it's trying to get them to come in and engage with you. Um, it's a guiding style. So it's like listening back. So I've heard that you said this, you know, summarising, um, being respectful, all things that you're doing, respecting their autonomy and empowering them to change their behaviour. Clinicians wise, but with you, it's about um, talking to them and hopefully getting them to listen. You're trying to get them to come in. And that's, that's a big deal. Um, people only change when they're interested and concerned and the need for change. Hence, we, we offer you, we get you some, some clinical kind of top tips, if you like, that might help a bit, but it's finding the right hooks, like you say, we can do this we can do that you know do you realize that we get your blood pressure better it will, it will be benefit you this way um just it's the hook it is all about the hook which you've all talked about and you all do um and you know taking the necessary steps so signposting them bringing them back bringing them in a week's time um everyone's on this you know you get people that you on the stage of change so i had a patient who absolutely was never going to go on metformin his mother died it was all metformin's fault then we're never going to go. It took me six months to get him to take that for me. Six months of seeing him every so often. And eventually he trusted me enough and he moved along that change cycle. And, if, and I'd get him anything off that. 
but he had to trust me enough that I wasn't going to kind of like poison him with metaphors. You know? So it's, 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 it's picking, you can pick up on that phone call, can't you? Where they are in that cycle. So it's just recognizing that. And it may be, I mean, if you're speaking to somebody, are they nodding their head? Are they are they thinking it's, you know, are they committing to change? Are they just saying yes, no, yes, 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 yes. Yes. And then you realize they're doing it. You can always tell, can't you? And it's just picking it up. And I if you recognize it's not, you could say to them, look, you know, I'm not here to judge you. You know, are you there? Do you, do you think you really can? Or what can you do? What can you commit to do? Can you commit to walking? an extra bus stop a week <laughs> yeah I can do that okay let's just stick to that so it's just literal can you commit to coming to one of the two appointments or can you you know just finding the compromise if they feel they've got a little bit of say in it sometimes you can convince them um this is that dive it is true it, it's it's not the strongest species it's those who will change that it's about people who are willing to move with it you're all willing to move. We're going to change. We're going to make a difference. And that's really important. It's those who don't want to change, who still believe it's, hello, can I help you? What are you doing today? We're not like that anymore. We're like, hello, what, how can I help you? This is my agenda. What's yours? What can I do for you? What, you know, I can hear what you're saying. Let's look at that as well. So it's just changing. That's how we're going to make things better. And that's how we're going to help GP land survive longer. And we're going to help patients feel they've got a good service and stop them talking about you that. Um, so it's about is the heart. So if you feel the patient feels this, and they will move forward. They will start to once they trust you, and it takes a while of working with them to trust you. You you know you'll you'll get them. To, you you will get them in. And that's why sometimes it's useful for you to follow up yourself rather than you know. I'm sure you do this. It's you that brings them back, so they know begin to know who you are. Um. So ask and record smoking status. I mean, you must, do people go back? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Why do I know how to smoke? Um, best way to stop smoking, obviously, you've got all your borough stop smoking services um, and just, you know, direct them, know, know, know your tools in your box. Um, so it's just being confident. If their confidence is low, which you've picked up again, that's the first thing to unblock, isn't it? How can we build their confidence up? Okay, well, let's find out what's causing that. Um, and if the desire is low again, it's working with what that patient's presenting to you. And it's really hard to unpick it sometimes. But, um, yeah, it's working with what they what they want to do and then seeing. So you, we've, we've, this is what you've talked about. It's picking up the blockers and seeing what we can do. How can we move that brick so you can move forward? Let's see how we can move that out of the way so you can get to the next step. We'll do it together kind of thing. Um, and motivation is a fire from within. If someone else tries to light the fire underneath you, it will burn briefly and it'll go out. So if you go out of here and I haven't inspired any of you, which is fine, I may not have done, probably not a lot will change. But if you've taken some of what we've talked about today and think, do you know what? I think I can make a difference. Then I've done my job reasonably well. So and, and also you're going to go back and change practice and make patients' lives better, which is what we're here for, isn't it? So I think, you know, and then and, and your mood's better because your job's more satisfying. It's not negative at the end of the day when you've had 50 people throw the phone down at you. You know, it, it's it's much more satisfying when we, when we make when we feel like we're engaging with our patients. Um, so open-ended questions, build motivations change, strengths and commitments change. Um, you know, patient resisting your offer of an appointment. Can you tell me why you're not keen to come into the appointment? It is worth asking that, as long as you don't want to know the answer. But um, it's when well, we've got that question actually we can deal with the answer even if you know we can try and solve it um thanks for explaining why you don't want to come for this appointment i appreciate your honesty would it be helpful if i asked the clinician to call me back or i'm going to task favorite gp and see what they actually say you know see if i can help you because immediately you're breaking down barriers because you're you're helping them so just to check i've understood you don't want to come to this appointment because every time you see a gp you feel nothing ever changes and they don't listen Yes, that's exactly right. Okay, is there anything? That, let's see what we can do to change that. What can we do? How can that, you know, I'll work on it, see how we can fix that. Um, to summarise, I've heard that you've lost your faith in Jesus, but you're happy to speak to our advanced practitioner. I've booked you an appointment. Is that correct? Just so they can hear that you've actually listened to everything they say, because that's their biggest effort. Um, meeting resistance with respect and with empathy, building empathy, you know, understanding, which you all do. You've talked about that today. I don't need to go through all that so you know rolling with resistance keep going even if it's like your 10 minute slot is used up with them 
whatever they're doing, I, I, you know, thank you for talking to me today. Would you mind if I called you back next week? Maybe next week you'll get straight in there with the appointment. Um, so, again, it's important to understand the degree of intent behind their behaviour, to remember that they can immediate reactions, you know, situations are fairly automatic. It's just really just... As you've, you've said all this, you dig deeper. What, so what really is the problem here? And you'll get there. Um, so quick fixes. Start with them. Um, is it? What's the quick wins? Let's get all the smoking. Let's get all the BMIs. What's the quick wins to get our cough numbers up? It's, you know, what are the quick patients like a quick fix? You know, so use simple phrases to remind the patient of their autonomy, their power. You're the expert, so I'm not sure how I'm the best person to judge what will work for you. You know, I can hear you can't come in at four o'clock um, every day. Well, what 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 would work? Well, let me just give you some power here. Let's see what we can do. I'll send you a booking link. You don't have to do it now. I'll send you a booking link so you can actually book yourself when you're ready. Um, you may want to check that a little later. So, um, but I can recommend you come and see our nurse who's ready, and and, we, and uh, this can as it will give you the opportunity to discuss your concerns. So all just ideas. Um, you're the only one who can decide what's best for you. And ultimately, it is, isn't it? We can't, we can take a horse to water, take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. So all we can do is leave them there. This was just, um, again, silly, really. Uh, you know, is it a good time to talk? I'm calling to offer your appointment for diabetes and blood pressure. I'm not sure. Is there something wrong? Why are you calling me in? We're calling you so you can go through your blood pressure results, check your blood pressure, discuss your medications. But this is also an opportunity for you to ask any questions you may have. Oh, okay, I'm very busy at the moment. And I'm not sure I'll get the time. Okay, I'm hearing that you're busy and a bit concerned at why we're calling you. Shall I have a look for an appointment in a few weeks' time so you've got time to think? What would be a good plan for you? Um, or I suppose, what are you thinking? Well, let me have a look. And I'm and I'm looking, maybe we have a think about what you might, while I'm looking, have a think what you might like to discuss with the GP as this is your time too. Just an idea, you probably do all of that. Um, and then always finish on a point. Somebody said, finish on a Never, never hang up with an angry patient. Try and always come up with a. It's not easy, but if you can, otherwise the complaints come, and then there's a whole load of work it's that way as well. Um, and that that is kind of oh, I'm not going to play that video. That's good. I'll turn back. So that that's the end, really. That's everything, and that's you know. And I, I'm very grateful. Thank you for being so reactive with me because I could have been really boring if I just been talking at you. Um, is there anything I've missed off? Anything you want to say? Has it been useful? Yes. Yeah. Um, hopefully. And um, we will see. I'll talk to Lauren. We'll see if we can get a, a clinical one for you. Yeah. Um, your homework is to find Lauren and find out who's on your call, who's organised you and sent you here. And you go and ask them, can I go on the MGT meeting? Choose one of you. Um, what else was it? Find out, you know, what and, and share your ideas. You've got good ideas. And Lauren's written them down. So when we send the slides, we'll send the ideas around so we've got them all. Yeah. So thank you so much, all of you. And have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.